Welcome into a Friday edition of the Jordy Collada Show, presented live by Go Chevrolet every single day here, live from the UDL, as you can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and of course, JordyColladaShow.com. Appreciate all the interaction throughout the week. Make sure and like, share the post, as uh, we appreciate everybody for being involved here. We will talk to Wilson Alexander from The Advocate coming up at 7.30 this morning, 8 a.m. Ben Mintz from Omaha, Nebraska. We'll check in from the College World Series. And at 8.30 this morning, Nathan Velasquez, the five-minute critic, talking Hollywood as he's over in New York getting set for a uh, for a weekend. We'll talk to Nathan about what's happening uh, around the box office and some of the blunders over the last week happening uh, around the box office and some of the blunders over the last week. Coming up at 8.30 this morning, Jordy Collada Show presented daily, as we tell you all the time, by Go Chevrolet. Remember, online you can find them at GEAUXChevrolet.com. Great new car inventory over in Laplace or the used car lot here in Baton Rouge on the corner of Sherwood Forest and Florida Boulevard. Anything that you shop online or in Laplace, you can find in Baton Rouge. So just get in touch with Go Chevrolet online at GEAUXChevrolet.com. Coffee is daily presented by Majestic Coffee. Locally ground down here in South Louisiana, deliciousips.com to get your own. And uh, all of our guests via the phone line will be compliments of Metropolitan Health Group. Real doctors, real solutions. Charlie Harvey, the entire crew over there at Metropolitan Health Group. Shout out to all of those guys. And Jason Ramazan, who you heard here yesterday. Of course, the CEO of Mr. Funds Travel got a couple of emails and text messages and phone calls yesterday about Ramo's spot on how they can book their trip on the uh, on, on the trip to uh, Pasadena for LSU UCLA. Just log on like MrFunstravel.com. Do they call him Mr. Fun? Like out oh, yeah. Of, oh, God, okay. what a nickname. Yeah, oh, absolutely. you got to live up to that. Yeah. That's tough. Fun. He's a really fun guy. Um, and, and he embraces it. Mm-hmm. Loves it. Um, I think you have to. Yeah. Almost would probably call himself Mr. Fun. Would introduce himself. <laughs> He's that into he kind of like into owns, owns the nickname so much that he, he would call himself the nickname. Um, so uh, no Jack here this morning. It's Jack, of course, checking ideas uh, at the house on Thursday night, keeping all the kids out. Uh, Noah is here. Katie is here. And, of course, Lizzie behind the microphone here on this Friday morning. So uh, get involved with us. Any type of uh, interaction on YouTube, Facebook, uh, as we say, always grateful for it here uh, like we'll each morning. Out over here. Yeah, no, we got are. The shirt on, we got the pillow. Speaking <laughs> of Will Wade, boot up as the Tigers uh, are able to uh, keep hot on the recruiting trail. This one for 2022 four-star shooting guard Justice Williams committed to LSU on Thursday. He is uh, fresh off of an official visit last weekend. Uh, he is the number two uh, commitment uh, in this class for 2022, joining four-star wing Devin Ree. Uh, Where's he from? He is uh, from, uh, check that out, on his exact whereabouts. Uh, but he was on uh, in uh, Go247 talking about his uh, his trip. Uh, he's out of Mount Verde. This is where Ben Simmons went to high school. That's what I thought I didn't want to cool. say it, but that's what I thought. Uh, his hometown is uh, Philadelphia, PA, uh, but he is down in uh, Mount Verde at uh, the fifth-year high school. Uh, playing down there where LSU has had a, tr- a tremendous amount of success uh, with some of those schools like IMG and Mount Verde, uh, of course, with uh, Brandon Murray being a part of the class this season from IMG and now seeing Justice Williams, who is ranked the number 33rd, uh, ranked the number 33 uh, player nationally uh, next season and the, uh, the second rated shooting guard uh, in the country. So Will Wade and the LSU Tigers stay hot on the recruiting trail as uh, they're able to pick up Justice Williams uh, yesterday, uh, a four-star shooting guard out of Mount Verde Academy. Uh, so LSU is uh, staying hot as they beat Auburn, Maryland, Michigan, Purdue, UConn, and plenty of others who were uh, lined up for Williams. Will Wade, Kevin Nickelberry uh, deserves a lot of credit on this. Uh, we're able to get, uh, get Justice Williams in. They have to be so frustrated with this, like the the old blue bloods of the of the program. Elbow uh, LSU just keeps elbowing itself in for recruits because when you have to compete against schools that you know you necessarily never had to before, and they, LSU just keeps popping up for these cats, and it has to be so frustrating. Uh, well, you saw it yesterday, Kurt Ferentz, who is uh, yeah, our, Kurt football coach uh, earlier this week. Shots. Earlier this week, Kurt Ferentz, who is uh, probably the most overrated 
an overpaid coach in college football. As, as far as respect goes, I have never gotten the year-in, year-out Kirk Ferentz love that college football shows this guy. I mean, what has this dude accomplished at Iowa for him to reserve or, or to, to deserve uh, all of just the, the respect he gets year in, year out? Uh, and then he has the nerve earlier this week to make a comment uh, to the NCAA about the NCAA, about some basketball coach down south. Uh, uh, the guy down there, he's still coaching, and the athletics director lost his job. I mean, what are we even doing? I don't know, Kirk. What are you doing up there running a program, hiring a racist as your weight training coach, man? <laughs> if you want to play the game, we can you know play the I mean? game. We can play this game all day long if you want to. I mean, you were the one that was hiding a racist on your staff. What did he do? The I mean, is is, is 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 um, his strength and conditioning coordinator was? I mean, there there were reports uh, over the last couple of years, uh, close to all, uh, nearly a decade of this guy creating a a work uh, you know a work environment that was very uncomfortable for 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 players, and it was uh, centered around. Uh, a lot of racist communication mm -hmm. uh, and, and a lot of uh, degrading communication. And Kirk Ferentz knew about it. There's oh, wow. no doubt he didn't know about it. And he was covering it up or he was just trying to sweep it under the rug. So, Kirk, worry about your own house, bro. Well, and Kirk, uh, you might want to just lay low for a little bit because you got a great gig going over at Iowa. Nobody really, you know, nobody in the Iowa contingency wants to hire anybody else. But if you look at what you're doing, you're not that, you know, you're not that great. Yeah, man. I mean, I mean like, just lay low, collect the check. I, I don't, that's what I don't get. Like, I mean, you have been robbing the state of Iowa and, and college football. It, it's unreal how, how much respect this guy gets for accomplishing nothing. Zero. Nothing. I mean, z nothing. There has been nothing that Kirk Ferentz has accomplished to make you say, hey, man, he's one of the good college football coaches out there. I mean, he does it every year. He's doing it right. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and for him to come out and make comments like he did earlier this week, I mean, Kirk, bro, the glass house you're making these comments out of, just go ahead and get your place right. You're lucky to, ca you're lucky to have your job. How much do you think he makes a year? Uh, I would say four million bucks. Damn, four and a half. Been there since 1999. I mean, just robbing you. <laughs> you blind. Now I mean, he lives in your house. Yeah. He moved in <laughs> into the attic, and you didn't know that he was there. <laughs> then he just walked on there. Like, I guess he can stay. I'm surprised he doesn't coach games on Saturday with a bandana over his face. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just robbing you robbery. in the open public. <laughs> Pay me my salary. Buy the tickets. Go buy your concessions. Um... But Will Wade is continuing to piss off everybody in college sports except for the recruits as he continues <laughs> to just reel them in. The number three, uh, number two shooting guard in the country for 2022, Justice Williams, after his latest visit to LSU, commits yesterday to the Tigers, becoming the second commitment for the class of 2022, joining Devin Ree uh, as a, a future LSU Tiger. So shout out to Will Wade. We will talk to uh, Wilson Alexander about some of the LSU baseball storylines that continue uh, to be discussed and, and talked about down here in South Louisiana. Uh, and this coaching vacancy, this coaching search for LSU baseball continues uh, to, uh, to stay moving as another day comes and goes <laughs> down here in ever. South Louisiana with no announcement. Maybe Monday. Uh, it should be Monday. <laughs> Uh, it should be at some point uh, over the next week, uh, unless the candidate or or the the potential next coach is is it's busy. is season still alive? <laughs> still busy. Right? I mean that 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 he's got a conflict on the schedule that he can't yet announce that he's going to another job because the current job that he's in uh, is still playing. Um, so look, th this thing has obviously uh, been a very much the the center of, of conversation for a lot of people down here in South Louisiana this week, whether you're talking heads like us barking into a microphone or whether you're just going to business lunches every day, people are wanting to know what is the next move going to be for LSU baseball. And I'll just say this, as we've said all week long, I, I think that Scott Woodward has done a tremendous job first and foremost on the public relations of this thing. Yeah. Because anybody who's telling you that they really know 
really doesn't know <laughs> because he has not allowed anybody in to, first off, there's no information that's leaking out, which I, I think we need to recognize is another accomplishment of Scott Woodward within his own department that he has figured out very quick on the job. I mean, how easy was it to find out information out of the a LSU Athletic Building uh, just a couple of years ago and threw out Joe Oliva's um, tenure? Tenure. I mean, it was like a high school cafeteria. <laughs> it was like the high school gym room. It was like the high school locker room. I mean, it was, it was the center of the gossip column was the LSU Athletic Administration Building. And, and there, were, there were more leaks than there were, th th there were loyal employees in that building. And one of the first things that Scott Woodward has done is found the leak and made sure that the leak is no longer within the meetings that mean anything. Because I think anybody that's telling you, oh, my guy's telling me this, or my source is telling me this, is lying to you. Because we have connections. We have sources. We know people. But what I'm telling you is what they're telling me. Is that Scott Woodward is handling this. And that Scott Woodward is a big game hunter. And that Scott Woodward is going for the best. And he's not scared to pay anybody. And that's his reputation. And if it is or if it's not Mike Bianco, I think it would be very easy to announce Bianco at this point. If he was really the guy. Well, yeah, for sure. If he was the one that, that, that we believe was next and that it was his job to turn down, as we've heard before. Well, did he, did he turn it down? Has he been here really this I, week? I don't know that. I mean, I've heard that, mm -hmm. but I don't know that. Just the longer it seems like it goes, the less it seems like it's going to be Bianco. Yeah. Because if they're offering him the job, there's no way he says no. Like, no way. So, right? And wouldn't Ole Miss be kind of, why would they operate in good faith under all of this? Has right. he been offered and taken the job? Why would they not start their own search at some mm -hmm. point? Like, it seems like, why, why would they even cooperate with LSU in their doings? I, I agree wholeheartedly. I, I think that they're, if you follow the signs... On, on on this matter, if you if you can't follow the information because we're not privy to the information, nobody that is telling you that they're getting the information, l l listen to me. I mean, I, I'm I'm barking into this microphone. I've got nobody's told me any. Nobody's told me that Tony Vitello's getting the job. Nobody's told me that that Dan McDonald is getting the job. Know his name though. <laughs> is that we got name? there eight times. Yeah. Was it <laughs> Took two weeks. <laughs> no more McDowell. <laughs> Don't I put mean, it back in his head, dude. It's never God, start from Lee, I, was just, I was just thinking, <laughs> was it McDowell <laughs> or McDonald? McDonald. Uh, uh, yeah. sort of We've think got of. the Big Mac. They've got the Big <laughs> Nick. That's what you got to But it, it's just. I'm reading between the lines here. I'm talking to the people up there that I I, I trust and, and that I I talk to. But I'm reading between the lines. I mean, look at Scott Woodward's reputation and look at the way this negotiation is being handled. If it's as simple as everybody says it was, it would have been over on Monday. It would have been over as soon as LSU and Ole Miss's season was over. That way you can put people in place and allow him to start building his staff. Do you want to retain Nolan Kane? Do you want to let him go? What do you want to do with Nolan Kane? Should he continue to recruit the program or is he now out looking for work? I mean, those are some of the storylines. Those are some of the things from a, just a human element that people are concerned with. And if that stuff hasn't broken yet, well, then there's no news to report. And I think LSU would want to move quickly on this just because of some of the things that we just talked about. Timelines, recruiting, getting the program up and moving for, for next season. But obviously, either the search is continuing or the candidate or replacement is still coaching. And that's what I take away from it. I, I, I do. I, I think that Cliff Godwin and Mike Bianco were candidates for this job, and they still may get the job. It would be surprising at this point if Bianco was named LSU's head baseball coach just because of the time that has elapsed, and why not make the deal? Why not make the announcement? If he's a shoehorn in to be the next guy, 
when it's a very simple press conference to to bring together and announce. Do you think there's a chance it could be no one that we've even mentioned yet? Possibly. Wouldn't that be something? I mean, I don't know who it could be. You know, I mean, I, I think that, that Corbin continues to gain some steam behind. Just behind. because of the name, huh? Like, it's an interesting name to bring up to where, like, well, I never thought about it, but now I will. It doesn't seem like there's a real connection there. It's just the fact that, like you say, he's a big game hunter, and that's a big game name out mm-hmm. there. So if we haven't hired anybody, if LSU hasn't hired anybody yet, so put that put that fire you know put that log on the fire and see what happens. Well, I heard his name very early on in the process, and to me, he makes sense for 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 Scott Woodward. I He'll mean, the best. He is reputably right now. He's in the discussion of the best college baseball coaches in America. I would I would come back with if I was just trying to play devil's advocate within the room of of Woodward would just be the layout in which he's doing it. At Vanderbilt. Environment. Yeah, right. I mean, Vanderbilt is, uh, while he deserves the credit of building the program into a championship contender year in, year out, uh, he has found a model that nobody else is playing by. I mean, to put it frankly, he doesn't have the same rules as everybody else. And it's not his fault, and he's not cheating. He's taken advantage of what's right there at his fingertips, and other schools can't compete with what Vanderbilt does from a private money and a scholarship standpoint, that's how you end up with Kumar Rocker and, and, and Jack Take Leiter on your, same on your staff. same staff. I mean, that's how that happens. You know, I mean, when, when, when Paul Maneri's making comments in the beginning, of, I don't know how they get these guys. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, a lot of it is, is not by, by fair playing on the recruiting grounds, but, you know, I mean, this is, that's that's the rules that Vanderbilt plays by, and, and and for Corbin's standpoint, he's done a tremendous job of maximizing that model. So would it work in Baton Rouge? I still think that he's a he's a really good baseball coach, but you don't have the same you don't have the the the, the same benefits of the private money but we do have LSU does have the tops which is something he could he would understand and know how to navigate because it's similar to what they have with their endowment fund but not on, not nearly on the same scale right yes i agree um you know it's 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 um, it's an it's an advantage for LSU for sure but it's just not to the level of what Vanderbilt gets to do with that endowment because they can pick up anybody that, that they want there is a, no scholarship it, limit it's a step back but it's not as far of a step back as it would be. Yeah, he's not going sport. to an absolutely right. even playing field. He'll be operating it with still with a, an advantage. Talking about Tim Corbin? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah he'll yeah, understand yeah. how to operate that, t- like how to navigate the tops because it's it's the same pitch, just different. And I still think that, that Corbin looks at the LSU job as one with a certain amount of cachet. You know what I mean? I still think that people within the game that that understand the history of the sport look at LSU baseball and from a, a managing standpoint, from a coaching standpoint, um, a lot of people still look at it as a destination job, as a place that you'd love sure. to go experience. You'd love to get that type of support, that type of, of fan enthusiasm, um, the excitement around the game. All of that stuff has to be attractive to college baseball coaches. So even somebody like Tim Corbin, who you know is playing in, in, a, in a model and under a frame that not necessarily everybody gets to play with, I still think he looks at LSU's opportunity as one that that is a great chance for a college baseball coach. Um, so, look, I, I, I have said and and still stick to um, that that Scott Woodward is is in the deep waters and he's looking for the big fish and he wants the biggest fish and he's still out there uh, trying to put him in the boat or maybe he's got him in the boat and we just don't know about it. Um, but to me, if it was Mike Bianco, it would have been announced. And and maybe they do it on a Friday. Maybe they do it on, on, on a news dump day where you're going into the, the college baseball World Series and you steal a couple of headlines going into the weekend. Um, doesn't seem like the style of Woodward. Doesn't seem like if it was Bianco, why you would wait this long to make the announcement. If it was done earlier this week, just call the press conference and announce who the next coach is. Um, is there any benefit to announcing during during the College World Series if it's not an absolute home run hire? Like if it's a Mike Bianco and that's clearly not what the LSU contingency has wanted, 
than if you announce it at during you know college baseball coverage is about to start tonight, yeah. and then that would that would obviously lead the ticker in terms of like yeah, I would what you talk about in the booth during downtime, like OSU baseball gets a new hire, they right. bring in a former LSU catcher, and if that's not something that you really want out there in terms of public appeal, then you I would see dump that it in today. itself is not Scott Woodward. Right, he's not going to make a hire that he's not confident in making the announcement to mainstream news. Like, it's not going to be that. It's not going to be Joe Oliva settling for Johnny Jones. It, it's, it's, it's never going to be that again, in my opinion, just because of who he is and what his expectations are for his athletic department. And that's why Mike Bianco, while a fine guy and a fine coach, doesn't make sense in this role right now. At certain times, he did for LSU. And I still think if he's the guy, he can have success. I'm not saying that if Bianco's here, that he's going to be a loser. I still think that he can have success here, but for what, what, what Scott Woodward looks for and what his reputation has been garnered on, Bianco's not the guy. And Woodward takes so much pride in that reputation, it seems like, especially coming into LSU, where we've had, obviously, significant issues in our, in our athletic department this, this wouldn't be his, his move to make. It would be an absolute splash because he's trying to bring in everybody to LSU. He's trying to bring in ass kickers. Mm -hmm. I agree. And, look, I still think that Cliff Godwin is, is possibly an option here. When you just look at his accolades, when you just look at his age, when you just look at what he's accomplished, and you know the guy that we talk about shows up to the ballpark with something to prove every single day with you know, just kind of a, uh, uh, you know, an FU-type attitude. Um, you know, he, he, he checks that. That was our pick, right, yesterday? No, I picked Godwin, and I thought about it yesterday, and I'm going back to Vitello just but we because I, I wanted to. Yeah. But yesterday. He was Vitello. You yeah. weren't here, Noah. Who would your pick be? Because Jack picked Vitello, My too. pick would be Godwin, but I want, want it to be Vitello. Yeah. Like, I want Vitello as the coach, but I feel like Godwin is, like, a, kind of the same guy, not as in your face. Not as brash. But right. still going to do the same job. And so I think he's safer than Vitello. He brings right. similar things to the table yeah. in terms of age and passion, but it's not so much, you know, it's not so gusto, much F like you in your face. Fingers yeah. are yeah. out. Right. Do you, and it, uh, for Woodward, don't you think this, this hire kind of symbolizes a changing of the guard under the LSU umbrella? Like, this is what he's trying to do come in and make a splash. And there's probably the LSU baseball hire is as close as you can get to LSU football in terms of trying to make. It's as big a deal to people as, as any job in the country down here. Mm -hmm. I think Woodward would probably tell you privately, and I don't know this for certain, just because of, and I'm just guessing on this, and, and knowing him a little bit, knowing that he's from Baton Rouge, he went to LSU, he worked at LSU under Skip Burtman in the athletic department. While he was at LSU, he understood the Gravity. The, 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 the royalty of what LSU baseball is, the, 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 the demand that it has on the fan base down here. I think this is Scott Woodward's biggest hire of his athletics director's career. You know, I mean, he made a move at the University of Washington to bring Chris Peterson in, and, and he was able to get Peterson from Boise State where everybody in the country was trying to pluck Chris Peterson away from that job, and he got him to Washington, and that was a phenomenal hire. When he got to Texas A&M, he got Jimbo Fisher to Texas A&M. When he got to LSU, he made a move on a vacancy to get Kim Mulkey into a, a replacement situation for Nicky Fargus. Now he's got a coach that gave him a, a little bit of warning that he was retiring in the biggest seat and biggest opening that he's had to replace since he's been making these decisions, in my opinion, for him personally. For him personally. You know, I mean, I think a lot of people would look at the Texas A&M head football coaching job as something big to fill when you've got boosters saying, how much money do you need? It's and almost it, easier to and, do that. And, and there, is, there is no cap to what you tell us is enough. There's no such thing as too much money. Does he want $75 million guaranteed? Well, then let's give him $75 million guaranteed. I mean, while Scott Woodward deserves the credit of going to get Jimbo and bringing him to College Station, anybody in this room could have made that deal. We walked into the negotiation with an unlimited amount of funds. Jimbo, what is it going to take? I'd like 75 for a decade, guaranteed. Done. Here you go. You want to sign it? Can we get on the plane now? Uh, yeah, sure. 
Do you think um, Jimbo left going, shit, dude, I should have asked for more. <laughs> like, maybe. I <laughs> maybe. got 100 million. You always would, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, the guy got 75 guaranteed, right, bro. But it was so you easy. I mean? He like, was like, oh, they just said yes? Mm-hmm. You know? I mean, I, I'd imagine Saban was probably like, damn, <laughs> bro. Where's Richie? Get set shit on the bone. Dog. <laughs> um, so, I, I, I think that Woodward understands that in this hire. And while Mike Bianco makes a lot of sense for that mindset, he's still Scott Woodward. He's still the guy that is the biggest of game hunters and that has a reputation of opening up the checkbook. And now he's at his place. Now he's at the place where not only is he qualified and, and has you know the reputation of being one of the, the best athletics directors out there, he's at a place that he cares about. A, a place that, that, that pulls on his heart, a place that means something to him, a place that has history with his family and kids, a place that he wants to create his legacy. And he looks at these types of moments as legacy builders. And I think that's one of the things and the ingredients that make him great. And that's why I think during this, 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 this search – He's he's in much settling. he's in much deeper waters than what we're talking about. He just he he just is to me. I just think that there is that there is a a scenario and a situation that says to 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 Scott Woodward, keep going, let's keep rolling, drop the baits. There's bigger fish out there. Let's see if they'll talk. Let's see if they'll listen. If they do, let's make our push. Let's make our play. And I just I, I believe in my heart that. The guy that is next at LSU's job is still coaching his team right now. We'll ask Wilson Alexander about it. We'll also talk about the New Orleans Pelicans, Zion Williamson, um, the Pelicans. They are in a they're they're in a spot. They're in a bind. David Griffin. Uh, this is the, the the summer of Griffin's life, professional life, uh, as it is uh, as it is being discussed right now with the New Orleans Pelicans. Uh, they fire Stan Van Gundy or Van Gundy leaves yesterday. Uh, either way, this will be the third year and third head coach for the Pelicans franchise. Uh, they're doing this all with a generational superstar going into the final year of his contract. Next summer, Zion could opt out of this thing and the whole deal could just vanish right in front of your eyes. So we'll talk about what the perspective thoughts on the New Orleans Pelicans, what they do with Stan Van Gundy's replacement, how they do that uh, coming up here on the Jordy Collada Show. Uh, but daily, remember, we are brought to you by Go Chevrolet, G-E-A-U-X, Chevrolet.com. Stop in and see Lee Carney, uh, Nick Richard, the entire crew. They've got a used car lot here in Baton Rouge off of Florida Boulevard and Sherwood Forest, and they're also uh, in Laplace, Louisiana, with a brand-new car selection. Everything's online. they got social media. Go Chevrolet, G-E-A-U-X, Chevrolet.com. We will talk to Wilson Alexander about LSU baseball next. Are you self-employed? Then you need to learn about Angel Oak's Home Loans Bank Statement Program that they're offering, which makes you eligible as a self-employed borrower to purchase or refinance a home without requiring a tax return. If you want to learn more, get in touch with me. Email me, jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn about the Bank Statement Loan Program offered by Angel Oak. jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn more. Gearing up for spring and summer down here in South Louisiana and you want to keep your lawn maintained during these sunny seasons, get in touch with our friend Blake Bear over at Bear's Lawn Maintenance where he says, you grow it, I mow it. 225-485-8022. 225-485-8022 is where you can find Bear's Lawn and Maintenance, the official lawn and maintenance company of the undisclosed location. Go Chevrolet is proud to announce Go Express Auto Sales, the new used car lot located in the capital city of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Go Express Auto Sales is online at goexpressautosales.com, or you can search them on Facebook and social media at Go Express Auto Sales, the newest addition to the family of Go Chevrolet. Remember, Go Chevrolet is located down in Laplace, Louisiana, but now welcoming aboard Go Express, the new used car lot located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana at 11522 Florida Boulevard.
All right, welcome back here to the Jordy Colada Show. Make sure and like and follow us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Set the notifications. Shout out to my guy, Marshall Holt, who loves us on social media. What a guy. Always following, always liking. Shout out to our guy down there. First like every post. First like every post. He's got, dude, talk about have have the bell on. Right. No, he's got, the, out Holt. he's got the notification Without set up. Without a doubt, bro. he's clicked the bell. We got to send him some gear. We got to send him totally. some gear for his support of our uh, of our social media. Shout out to him, freshly married, buying a new house, but always supporting the Jordy Steady Colada on show on uh, on social media. So shout out to Marshall Holt and uh, and his crew down in South Louisiana. Wilson Alexander covers LSU baseball over at the Advocate. He is a great follow on Twitter. If you're keeping up with anything on the latest of this coaching search or anything that was happening throughout the season, uh, we routinely go to him for uh, for information here on the Jordy Collada Show, and he's back with us here on this Friday morning heading into the weekend. Uh, good morning, Wilson. How are you? How are you doing? Doing good, buddy. Doing good. Um, obviously, everybody talking about this coaching search, uh, and everybody seems to have an opinion on this uh, on this coaching search. Uh, tell us first and foremost your point of view of this opening and w- what are the qualifications, in your opinion, that Scott Woodward is looking for in a replacement for Paul Maneri? Yeah, when you're looking at Scott Woodward's track record at, for hiring coaches, he likes, to make, he likes to hire people who have probably won a championship. You look at Kim Mulkey, she did that. You look at Jimbo Fisher when he hired him at Texas A&M, he did that. Um, people with a little bit of experience, somebody who is a little bit more of an established name, that tends to be who he kind of goes after. Um, but he also, I think, one you know, someone who uh, has a pretty good character and can uh, you know handle all the things that's required of the baseball coach at LSU, which is of course a little bit more than coaching. You know, talking to people at the L Club and um, doing all sorts of things, uh, you know, outside of just coaching baseball. Um, but I think he's probably one someone who's a little bit established in coaching. Um, that seems to be the kind of people he goes after. But he's, of course, been a little bit uh, type lip on exactly who he might want. But you also look at the kind of candidates that have come out so far, and they tend to be like that. Timeline, Wilson. Has it gone past what you expected to be the announcement, or is it still in that area where you expected it to be open? That's still in that area. You know, there's – Coaching searches can take a while. I mean, you know, sometimes you don't, uh, the first person you think of sometimes doesn't work out. Um, it, 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 it's not much, for, I mean, it's about where I expect it, it to be, uh, um, especially because, you know, I really didn't think anything would happen officially in any respect until LC season ended. And, of course, that just happened last weekend. Um, and they could still be interested in some coaches who were, Still coaching, and the way Scott operates, I don't think they would um, intensify any discussions until those coaches are done. Do you think he would like to steal some headlines of the CWS starting today? Do you expect an announcement over the next 24, 36, maybe even 72 hours? Um, I probably wouldn't at this point. Um, of course, things could change, and you know, these searches they could change really fast. Um, but I would not expect an announcement within that time frame, uh, barring something uh, different. Uh, I mean, that's just that's sort of where felt things felt like, uh, you know, at least yesterday, late afternoon of the evening. Um, if, if there's been a development since then, then you know, maybe that changes. Um, but I certainly wouldn't expect one any time today. Uh, we'll see if that changes over the weekend. How exhausting has this been for you? <laughs> um, handling this and uh, their super regional, you know, in regional run at the same time uh, was a little bit tiring. Uh, I won't lie, but uh, that's part of the job. So I uh, can't complain. I still get to hey here to you know go to baseball games and watch baseball games, and I'll never complain about that. Wilson Alexander is a great follow on Twitter. Check him out at wh alexander underscore. Uh, many people have this as a two horse race for this opening between Cliff Godwin and Mike Bianco. Do you sit? Uh, steady on those two names, or do you think that this is a, 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 a an interview process or a process that is reaching further than that? I, based on what I've heard, I think it's reaching further than that. Um, but I don't know specifically who they could be reaching toward. 
Um, but there's, uh, I think there's some interest in some coaches, uh, like I alluded to a minute ago, who are still at the College World Series. Um, clearly, they are accomplished coaches as they are, you know, fighting here for a championship. Um, and it sort of feels like one of those things if they were going to hire Mike Bianco or Cliff Godwin, they might have already been able to do that sometime this week. And that is not to say that they won't end up hiring one of those two guys. They still very much could. But I think that they're, you know, they don't, they don't feel too rushed here. Um, they feel like they can take their time. This is a premier job opening in college baseball. Um, and not that they're going to be able to get to whoever they want, but they can be feel like they can be a little bit patient because there's a lot of other schools out there that are probably waiting to see what else he does. Is one of those guys very good looking and come from an Italian heritage? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would be surprised if it was that guy, um, but uh, they thought, it seems he's maybe rubbed some people at LSU the wrong way. Yeah. Um, but then again, again, you know, these things they twist and they turn and they go in unexpected directions. So you can never truly count anybody out until there's somebody on the podium. Obviously, we're talking about Tony Vitello in that in that scenario, but there has been some some smoke around. Uh, Jeff Corbin and, and and his potential of of maybe being a candidate here, Wilson. You know the college baseball game uh, more than we do. I, I don't know why anybody would leave Vanderbilt, right? I mean, just because of the setup that you have. Yeah, I would. It would be pretty. Everything that you hear, it would be pretty shocking if Tim Corbin left. Um, not to say that Scott Woodward wouldn't try to go after him. I mean, he might. I, I really don't know. That that would be. And that's complete speculation at this point, but he uh, to, that would be the kind of hire that I think Scott the, the type of hire that we, you know we were talking about earlier. That I think Scott Phillips and making he's won Tim Corbin's won two national championships. He's got Vanderbilt absolutely rolling. That's one of the best programs in the country, you know, top two or three uh, right now, certainly in the past decade. Um, but yes, he's got a great set there. The way that they're able to the things that they're able to do with scholarship money uh, because of Vanderbilt being a private school and stuff like that. Um, is really advantageous. Um, he's also, his personality is really good for that. Uh, you know, the program it just, just embodies him at this point. And um, it would be hard to wrangle him away because he's already makes a significant amount of money. Vanderbilt, the exact figure I don't have off the top of my head. Um, but it would be tough to probably offer him more than what he already makes. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, Wilson, give me an idea what it was like to cover pulmonary over the last couple of weeks as he made the announcement going into the regional weekend where LSU probably played or not probably uh, played their best baseball of the season uh, and then following them to Knoxville for a uh, for an exciting uh, opening game and then a game uh, that obviously was not the way that pulmonary wanted his career to end but it came to a, uh, a screeching halt in Knoxville after a run out victory for uh, Tennessee to stamp their ticket to the College World Series uh, you covered this group all throughout the season, but what in particular were the last couple of weeks of, of covering Maneri like now that uh, people had known that he was stepping away from it? Yeah, it was exciting and bittersweet. Um, just because he knew someone, you know, you, you get to know Paul pretty well. He lets you in uh, when you cover him uh, to a large extent. And you could understand, you know, this is someone who has coached college baseball for nearly four decades. And then he'd be stepping away from it, and that's hard to do. It's hard to to do that, even though it was on, you know, very much on his own accord here. I think, you know, and, and he understood that it was probably time for him to do that. It's still hard to to step away from it. I mean, I talked to Karen Maneri, his wife, at one point before this, the regionals, and she was like, "It's like losing a friend or losing a family member because you know this game has been in our lives for the entirety of our lives, uh, their entire marriage. He has been a college baseball coach." And to be suddenly knowing that that was going to end, you know, that was probably a better sweep. But at the same time, in there, you could tell having made the announcement, he was having, he was a little bit more relaxed. He always gets that way, but during the postseason as well, because um, he's like, this is the time to have, you know, fun and enjoy it and really let it rip. And he was, he, you know, he was smiling more. He, he didn't have that burden on his shoulders of what am I going to do? Um, you know, he had made a decision, and there's a lot of stress relief that comes with that. Um, so it was both exciting, especially because of the way that they won in Eugene. Um, that was some of the best baseball I'd watched all season, especially from them. And um, but at the same time, it, it was sad to you know see somebody go through the kind of emotions that he was going through. 
you mentioned Tony Vitello, Tony Vitello rubbing some people at LSU the wrong way. Is there a specific instance of when he did it? Because he sidestepped a good bit of those questions going into the Super Regional where he kind of took the, took the higher ground. So is there a, a more specific instance of when he rubbed the LSU brass the wrong way? Um, I don't know if there is there's one there that they really didn't like. I mean, you could just watching him, um, you know, at Tennessee, he, he runs a little bit hot. Um, but, you know, and just that whole atmosphere, uh, was really contentious. Um, you know, most of the weekend, um, things that the fans were saying that, of course, I guess Tony, you know, can't necessarily control, but, um, just, you know, I think little things here and there, you could tell that they sort of, maybe roll their eyes a, a couple times um, and just uh, that, I'm not sure if there was one specific instance or anything like that um, that they weren't pleased with, but he just seemed to kind of not. Um, he doesn't jive with the you know, old but, guard of what LSU thinks. It yes, is. exactly. Yeah. Uh, I think that's probably a good way of putting it. Landon Marso was recognized as an all American earlier this week. Do you have any idea of what, what his future plans are? Not specifically. Uh, the expectation, you know, Paul has sort of hinted that, uh, you know, that he would be heading toward a professional uh, career, but Landon hasn't said anything official. Um, you look at him, I mean, he, he is a draft prospect this year. He's not a first-round draft prospect because of his size. Um, and, you know, when prospects talk about projectability, they don't see that in Landon because, you know, you don't see him adding another five miles to his fastball or five miles an hour to his fastball or something like that. Um, but he's all still a, a second to third round uh, possible draft pick, and, and if, if you're in that range, it's it's hard to pass that up, especially after your junior year. Um, he's done a lot at LSU and probably comp, probably proven as much as he can at this point. It'd be hard to come back and show more than what he did his junior year. He was just phenomenal all season. Um, I, I would expect him to get drafted and signed, um, but you know if he doesn't get the right number, then maybe he comes back. He they, he has a little bit more. Uh, ability to negotiate, you know, he's got a little bit more leverage um, being, you know, after a coronavirus, you know, having an extra year of eligibility still on the plate. He, he, you know, he's not one of those, he, he's still like sort of technically a sophomore in like draft eyes. So um, he could, you know, with those two extra years of eligibility, he has that leverage here, but um, I, I would expect him to sign uh, professionally, but um you know, he hasn't said anything in that, uh, uh, officially yet at this point. Wilson, I, I know that this is usually the time of the year where summer assignments are being handed out for players and, and sending guys up to either the Cape Cod League or summer leagues around the country. Um, do you have any idea if that's happening? If so, who is, who's overseeing that? Yeah, uh, Eddie Smith set up a lot of that uh, before he took the job at Utah Valley. And luckily this year, things aren't shutting down as they're trying to set up summer leagues. So, I mean, last year it was crazy. He was having to switch people around like every single day. You know, a league would shut down and he tried to be switching a guy to another league that was still open and had an opening. And they were able to be a little bit more solid with it this season. Um, and so that stuff's a lot, kind of a lot of it's already in place. Um, LT released a list of guys, where guys would be headed yesterday. Trey Morgan and Kate Veloso are up to the Cape. Uh, Dylan Cruz is playing in the uh, South Florida Collegiate League. Um, they've got guys a little bit spread out and a lot of them uh, playing in summer ball this year. Garrett Edwards is uh, pitching, which is a good sign after he had to leave that game with the forearm strain. Uh, at least he's assigned at this point. Um, pretty much uh, a lot of their guys are, are playing out in summer ball. Uh, do you have an expectation on a timeline here? I know I, I may have asked you this earlier in the interview just on the timeline, and if you were surprised that it got to this point, do you have an expectation of, of when it can be filled? I really don't. Um, you know, I would, I would expect it to, uh, other than before the major league draft, they definitely need right. to get somebody before that because of how much the, that has been in particular shapes rosters every year. Um, they need somebody in here. And, and I know that there's, you know, parents and the players are a little bit antsy right now too. I mean, they would like to know who their coach is going to be. Um, and they would love to see it before that July 1st deadline of when players are supposed to notify their schools that they're going to enter the transfer portal or not. Um, but at the same time, LSU realizes, you know, this is a long-term hire, and so they're kind of taking their time with it. Um, and so I would expect it to happen within the next few weeks um, at the very latest. Um, but, you know, things can always, you know, sort of happen quickly before then. So I don't have a, a exact range other than probably within the next 
you know, two weeks, and that's probably giving it a little bit more time than it actually will take. But you just never know. It depends on who's still coaching and who they're really going after and all those sorts of things. Wilson Alexander, make sure and follow him on uh, on Twitter at WHAlexander underscore as uh, you can keep up with the latest on this LSU baseball coaching search, uh, the announcement time, and everything that is around these uh, the LSU baseball coverage. Wilson does a fantastic job over the Advocate, and uh, he checks in with us routinely here on the Jordy Collada Show, which we appreciate very much. Thank you, Wilson. Have a great weekend, man. You too, Jordy. I appreciate it. You got it, man. Uh, Wilson Alexander checking in this morning from the Advocate, uh, talking a little bit about uh, that coaching search uh, and where it could uh, where it could it could venture. Uh, yeah, as... Dave Aranda vibes from him. Dave, yeah, he's got a little Dave Aranda. Very vibe. I think he's that, that's what I said. I think he's exhausted. Yeah. Like he just has to be because he's probably getting like constant texts. Yeah. Like, I don't know what to believe yeah. anymore, <laughs> but I have to report on something. I'll take one of these and run with it. If I get if I get hammered against the wall, oh well. Like you just have to. That's part of your job as a yeah. journalist. You don't know who to trust, but it sounds like it's been a 24-7 deal. Yeah. Well, I mean, covering Scott Woodward's athletic department compared to what the former athletic department yeah, was. Yeah, people were doing your job for you. All you had to do is just wake up and get get the news handed to <laughs> yeah, you. Oh, shit. All right. Yeah, all right. Sweet. <laughs> Looks <laughs> like they're going to go with Bianca on a Tuesday. Um, Let me put this yeah, in the I guess newspaper. I can go ahead and tweet this out. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it's just, I, I, it's that's probably what it's like to be a real life journalist. You know what I mean? It's just a change. constantly you have to go. chasing yes. and looking and looking for for sources and trying to figure out who is 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 valid and who is not. And um, you know, I think that's that is probably a little bit of the sentiment there from uh, from Wilson Alexander. Remember, Edward Jones brings you the Jordy Colada show here daily over at Edward Jones. Daniel Newman is our guy. Uh, Newman going to be fired up about this LSU basketball team as uh, LSU was able to uh, to get Justice Williams committed uh, last night uh, to uh, the class of 2022. But uh, all of the guys that they have on campus right now, Daniel Newman is a, a hoop head. Uh, he will talk a ton of basketball with you, but he can also set you up uh, with great finance, uh, great financial uh, decision making. Uh, as uh, he has got a great reputation over there of pointing people in the right direction, whether you work uh, at uh, Dow, whether you work at BASF, uh, any of the chemical plants out there, and you've got questions about your finances around your 401K, investment, Social Security, uh, Daniel Newman is an expert in that field. Find out for yourself this morning, daniel.newman at edwardjones.com. He's in central Louisiana, located right across from Stab Seafood or Stab's Restaurant, out there in Central. Uh, stop in and see Daniel Newman uh, with a little slight fist pump there from Noah, <laughs> the uh, the Central native, uh, on the Central <laughs> shout-out. Uh, they did Dan- a lot of news over there. Daniel.Newman at edwardjones.com. Daniel.Newman at edwardjones.com. Get in touch with him. We will close out our number one when we get back here on the Jordy Collada Show, which is presented daily by Go Chevrolet. Are you self-employed? Then you need to learn about Angel Oak's Home Loans Bank Statement Program that they're offering, which makes you eligible as a self-employed borrower to purchase or refinance a home without requiring a tax return. If you want to learn more, get in touch with me. Email me, jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn about the Bank Statement Loan Program offered by Angel Oak. jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn more. Gearing up for spring and summer down here in South Louisiana and you want to keep your lawn maintained during these sunny seasons, get in touch with our friend Blake Bear over at Bear's Lawn Maintenance where he says, you grow it, I mow it. 225-485-8022. 225-485-8022 is where you can find Bear's Lawn and Maintenance, the official lawn and maintenance company of the undisclosed location. Go Chevrolet is proud to announce Go Express Auto Sales, the new used car lot located in the capital city of Baton Rouge, Louisiana at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Go Express Auto Sales is online at goexpressautosales.com or you can search them on Facebook and social media at Go Express Auto Sales, the newest addition to the family of Go Chevrolet. Remember, Go Chevrolet 
is located down in Laplace, Louisiana, but now welcoming aboard Go Express, the new used car lot located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Are you self-employed? Then you need to learn about Angel Oak's Home Loans Bank Statement Program that they're offering, which makes you eligible as a self-employed borrower to purchase or refinance a home without requiring a tax return. If you want to learn more, get in touch with me. Email me, jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn about the Bank Statement Loan Program offered by Angel Oak. jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn more. Welcome back in here to the Jordy Collada Show live on this Friday. Good stuff from Wilson Alexander. Is Wilson kind of sounded like the next coach who may still be coaching? So if you got your pick of those guys, yeah, you're doing Everybody's all right. got sources. Uh, everybody's got their sources. He went out of his way to slander our guy, so that, must be, that might be another smoke screen. I agree. He's in on the game. I loved it. I loved that he's getting some info from somebody deep in. He's pissed us off. Yeah. <laughs> pissed us off enough to get the job, huh? Yeah. Can he ask for more money? Hire Tony V. Uh, there is some smoke down on the bayou right now. Kendall Rogers is reporting, uh, and Kendall Rogers, who was uh, duped early here by the LSU contingency, and Kendall Rogers has a reputation of uh, the best in the game of covering college baseball. This is a tweet from him 18 hours ago at Kendall Rogers tweeted, Coaching Scoop, former Mississippi State head baseball coach and LSU assistant Andy Canizero has emerged as the front runner for the Nickel State job. The head coaching job. That'd be a terrific restart for Andy and a great hire for Nichols, says Kendall Rogers. I agree with that wholeheartedly. I think there was some smoke around Jim Schlossnagel bringing in Andy Canizero, possibly as a recruiting coordinator slash hitting coach with, uh, with his new gig down there in College Station at Texas A&M. Uh, I think that Andy sees that he needs to get back in front of his own program uh, and, and let people know that he has... Uh, recovered from the off-the-field story that happened to him at Mississippi State and can run uh, a program again. And a, a, a entry point, uh, a good entry point, uh, seems to be Nichols State down in the bayou where he is very familiar being a New Orleans native uh, with that part of the country, with that geography and those types of players. Uh, obviously, he has recruited the state of Louisiana uh, very, very efficiently uh, since he has been uh, in college baseball, and right now he's the head coach at Holy Cross High School down in New Orleans uh, and has done a fantastic job uh, down there. Look, I don't think anybody has ever questioned his, his, his baseball uh, coaching pedigree or his baseball coaching uh, mentality or what he brings to a dugout as a baseball coach. Uh, just the things that haunted Canizero were some of the things, were, were all the things uh, that happened to him off the field uh, at Mississippi State. 
Uh, we don't need to revisit that story. Uh, if you're listening to this show, you probably know what happened. Uh, it is easy to find out what happened if you're curious on on Canizero at Mississippi State. But it, in my opinion, it is definitely something that is recoverable. Totally. And, and can be uh, a, a second chance for a college baseball coach with his type of talent. He's a great coach. In, in my opinion. Um, oh, scorned yeah. lover. I for, yeah, you should be upset. I'd imagine <laughs> Mississippi State. Well, I'm I mean, but, but y'all, I mean, the, the way they the quickly. way that they bounced back was incredible. I mean, yes. to get Lamonis in that in that situation and to keep up the success that Mississippi State baseball has done is a credit to uh, to to John Cohen. I mean, yeah, I'm not upset. I mean, Andy's a great coach, great guy. Oh, I, mean, I know. I just shame. feel like I feel like if I was in the in those shoes and that happened to LSU. I'd be like, oh, we were set up for the next 15 years, but uh, not, yeah. not 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 so fast. I think if something like this would have happened, and Andy Canizero is the head coach at Mississippi State, he is already the head coach at LSU. If 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 everything is aligned, where Canizero's got a clean record on off the field, and he is the baseball coach that we all anticip, anticipated him to be in Starkville, which he was on his way there. Right? I mean, one season super regional with a shitty team. <laughs> um. Oh, you to, think he he would hop right back to LSU in a, in a heartbeat? Ooh. Hey, think about that. He's a Louisiana kid. Yeah, that makes sense. You know I mean? But I'm just it's, saying it's, that the, from New Orleans, and you got the keys to the castle at what, what's Andy? He's 41. I mean, yeah, he'd be here for 25 years. I, mean, um, I was just thinking. Oh, yeah, I was guy. just thinking the state of that program and everything. It looks like it would be hard to walk away from, even now, for LSU. I, but when you say what LSU is, and I know he's from New Orleans. Yeah, I guess that would be the that would be the only job he would have left for. Yeah. Yes, it would have been. It would have been. And it's not a knock with Mississippi State. No, no, I it's think just that, that's what, I think that's what LSU does If you does ask somebody people. without LSU ties right now to compare the Mississippi State and LSU job, that the majority would probably say that the state job's better at this point. Right. When you just look at the, the facilities, the success. The energy uh, around the program. Yeah, I mean, look, right right now. Mississippi State is coming into LSU and, and getting Louisiana kids. Yeah. Right now. Now. Yeah, I mean, like, it's, it's, it's happening right now. So, I mean, um, and Andy could have done more of that. Oh, he would have done. He would have set up shop. Yeah. He, he would have set up shop. Um, it's silly. It, 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 you know, it is. It is. But I mean, when everybody has off the field drama. But when you get to that level, you got to be able to manage I that know, stuff. But it wasn't that big a deal. I mean, it, it eh, was my opinion. If you're texting in the dugout the and still one. winning, I think you I can do it. That yeah. That's problem. fine. He does. Like, I mean, he's doing baseball, it in the dugout. baseball is a slow game. You <laughs> I have love plenty it. of time. You time to text I, girls. I, I, lo- I love Andy Canizero. He's a good friend of mine. Um, you can't do that. Oh, he knows that. But I'm <laughs> saying, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you, 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 you can't do that. You can't. That, that's, that's insubordination. You can't do that and get caught. That's insubordination. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, you know, if, if you're, you're thinking about who you're going to change the pitcher with and you're texting your. Your girl, that just it ain't gonna work. <laughs> He's I mean, not good of a coach. I mean, it ain't gonna work. Exactly. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I'm saying. He's exactly. not multitasking. Exactly. I mean, you cut the you cut the BS. Right. And if you got, nobody knew that, it would have been totally fine. He was um, doing a good enough doing job doing a great to job. where you couldn't tell unless he got caught. Like you, there was yeah. no decisions where you're like, oh, he was probably texting in the dugout. That's right. why I didn't change him in the fifth inning. It's I Mississippi. Know. That doesn't fly there. I know. You got to be straight in there. Oh, if he did it at um, LSU, he would have never left the state. He'd be in prison. Yeah. No. No. That 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 gets him wherever he's at if he gets caught. I mean, yes. that, that's not a Mississippi State thing. That's not an LSU thing. That's a. It doesn't matter it, it, if, he's if you at, did it at high he school. He was doing it at Holy Cross. He'd be in. He'd be in trouble. Um, but saying all that, he's learned his lesson. Yeah, that'll yeah, never happen sure. to him again. And when you get past that stuff, he is a phenomenal baseball coach. Yeah, and he is a guy that can impact your team uh, both from a recruiting, hitting mentality standpoint overnight. And a good like guy. if they hi- he yes, he is very much a good guy. If they hire him at Nichols, um, watch overnight. I mean, they will become relevant because of just the mentality that he brings in. Are they not a good team? Uh, right I don't now? know. Well, and I don't know. Well, and I mean, if they're making a coaching move, they yeah. usually well, tell you. I think you, they would have done anything. I think it could have been anybody. And if, if Andy Canizero's name comes up and he's interested in the job, you would make the switch regardless. I wish he would have switched out Palmineri. You know, yeah. I mean, at, at some point they would have been entertained the idea. So Nichols definitely would do it. I can't. I don't want to bring this up again, but you not have like a GA that you could like run the phone with, like yes. send him, give him ideas of Absolutely. what to text, like Absolutely. say it out loud. No, no, that, that, it was speech to text at the at the baseline of it. And again, a it friend, was lazy on a friend, yes. a friend of mine, dumb. Yes, yeah, very stupid. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think he would say you're, you're, you're right. right. I mean, you're right. I mean, he just <laughs> you can't. 
<laughs> the power. Yes, undefeated. He made yeah. some mistakes. It's undefeated. Everybody I mean, does. Broken, BOTP. Broken dynasties. Yes. I mean, <laughs> lost and won wars. I mean, killed, killed wars. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just dethroned kings. I mean, the whole thing. I could stop. Undefeated. 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 Uh, More right. powerful than Father Time. It is. And not even close. Not even close. Not even close. I mean. You people. Uh, you people. You people. <laughs> <laughs> Daily, we're brought to you by Advanta Clean. Remember online at A-D-V-A-N-T-A clean.com. Get in touch with Bradley Lynch and his crew over at Advanta Clean. Fire, water, or mold damage. We made the call during the flood, and he helped us out tremendously. Uh, this is a first-hand, tes- uh, first-hand testimony. Speaking on Advanta Clean, get in touch with Bradley Lynch. Very easy to do online. Advanta Clean, A-D-V-A-N-T-A clean.com. Uh, and find out how they can help you today. Uh, let us go up to uh, Omaha, Nebraska, and link up with uh, Barstool's own Ben Mintz, who has uh, brought back the uh, uh, the Grow flavor the game. for uh, for college baseball. I love the video last week with him in Portnoy. <laughs> uh, if you want to bring that up of uh, Portnoy betting everybody. Good morning. That, hey, buddy. How are you? Good morning. Yep. Uh, we were just talking about the video with you in Portnoy last week inside the Barstool uh, offices when uh, he corners you uh, on your way in after taking all of the bets that you recommended and him losing what essentially looked like uh, the entire Barstool fortune. Uh, how have uh, how have you recovered from that? Oh, it was, I mean, you just, you got to pick in to work for Barstool Sports, you know. I mean, I knew what I was getting into, and well, I kind of look at it like, uh, I think it was. I mean, I think I, I think I took it as well. <laughs> you yeah, did, buddy. You know? you Mitzi, did. He put you in the corner. You just stood there and took just haymakers <laughs> and, and, and responded absolutely the only way you could. It was great. It was phenomenal. I, I, but another example, Mincy, and, and you and I have talked about this both on and off the air uh, of of just how much Portnoy loves Ben Mintz. I, I think that um, you 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 get the feeling. When there is Portnoy Mintz interaction, that he has a true just love for this guy, and then tweets like, "I, I hate myself for liking Ben Mintz," coming from Dave Portnoy. I just, wish I was Ben Mintz. Just screams <laughs> how much he loves the guy. Uh, you wake up and talk to us this morning from Omaha, Nebraska. It's your first time there. Uh, I can imagine that you were getting ready for what uh, expected to be a tremendous weekend. Yeah, to say the least. So there's a few things. We're staying at the Ameristar Council Bluff Bowl. It's right up by you know, five minutes from Omaha, Penn property. And uh, we're doing some fun stuff with the sports book here, uh, we're, which I'm excited about. Uh, yeah, I'm pumped. I mean, insert the jokes. You know, I'm catching all this heat on Twitter because everybody's like, oh, it's your first Omaha trip because you're an old man. But hey, you know, I mean, it is, okay? So what do you, what do you want from me? And, uh, and so I think that part's uh, pretty funny. But I mean, the, the interesting subplot here, and I know you have Katie that I feel like it's like full circle funny. I mean, if if I have to cover the state run to the national championship series with Brandon Walker, it's gonna be it's gonna be quite something. Um, I feel I just feel like full circle wise. I feel like I, I can I can see state making. I don't know. I just think that's the play. I don't I don't know what's gonna happen necessarily, but I think that'd be funny. Um, but yeah, I'm getting out around town today. I got here yesterday. Uh, but getting out around town, checking out. Uh, just the scene around town. I've never done it. You know, I do some videos and clips, and uh, and then the games uh, start tomorrow. And we're doing Pick Central from DJ's dugout, the bar, by the stadium from eleven to noon Monday through Friday. And what was cool was last week. You know, we had a few of us going to Omaha, but it wasn't. You know, it was a trip we were doing, but it wasn't pushed hard. And then like a couple of days ago, it became a huge priority at Barstool. And, you know, now you know we've got a big crew coming out here and. Uh, we, we, I might, we're doing really well with the shirts, and then I think, you know, Dave's just killing me about the, the pick last week, and rightfully so. And I want to mention, too, this, uh, I said this to Jordy before, uh, just doing, I've done picks, you know, around Baton Rouge on, on air and stuff for a few years, and I think I learned how to take heat from the Baton Rouge crew, and I think it prepared me <laughs> properly for Barstool, because the LSU fans, when you lose, they don't let you know it, and rightfully so. I think all that kind of prepared me for this. Would we, good. Would we have a, a three-year run on our morning show with the with, with Oh, the yeah, yeah. We had a great 17, 18, 19, and 20. I started, I think it was four. Started in 17. Um, um, is, is Brandon Walker in Omaha? Oh, Brandon Walker. Uh, Dude, coming, he's coming so for your shine. Oh, <laughs> uh, the Walker stuff's hilarious. It's so, so I mean, good. Like, he's I don't so funny. with that. <laughs> 
Yeah, he's, he's so tongue-in-cheek with the Thugs. He's obviously not been a big college baseball guy. So, I mean, like, you know, it, it's funny. I couldn't believe Peter Burns, by the way, who I know we all know. He said, thank you, P. Walt, for growing the game. You know, it's been a long time for Barstool to do this. I was like, this guy's got, is this guy joking? No, he, <laughs> he had to be trolling you. Had, had to be. He had to be trolling I, you. Yeah, had to be. I mean, it had to be. I was just like, you know, but I, I've never met him. I'm going to get to meet him a plenty of day or two. But, uh, but yeah, Brandon coming and Marty Bush coming and uh, Carl coming to Chicago. And Big T, so we had a good crew. And just really excited about just kind of – I mean, I, the thing with the college baseball thing, everybody's like laughing at me on Twitter like that, like I'm a, a college baseball expert. Like, I'm a fan. I had picked up a baseball bat since I was 14. You know, like, <laughs> I just like – I just like the sport, and I knew Barstool, you know, hadn't really done much. I thought it was a good opportunity because I'm trying to build the South. But uh, I think it's gone really well, especially last few weeks. It feels like it's kind of uh, – since the NCAA tournament started and we started getting lines on the sports book, it's really grind. So, uh, I'm, thr- I'm thrilled to be here, and, uh, you know, I'm just kind of like fanboying out a little bit and just going to see what happens. Oh, Mincy, you've done a tremendous job of bringing the, the attention to a, a hidden secret – uh, of sports, I, I think you've opened up a very passionate channel for a lot of sports people around the country to recognize that college baseball is something that you can love all year round. I mean, I think people get introduced to it in Omaha that don't pay attention to it, but somebody like you who has that platform that can bring attention to it, uh, it's been tremendous work, man. I mean, you've done a you. tremendous job of just uh, bringing that. What do you think of LSU's job still being open? And, and there was a lot of discussion uh, of possibly Mike Bianco as a filler earlier this week, but as, as, as time goes by, it seems like that theory is losing steam. Yeah, so I heard, so, I know Todd Walker was on a Shreveport show saying Bianco was down in Baton Rouge interviewing, but it didn't end up being true or something. Who knows? Uh, I keep, I'm hearing LSU mention a Cliff Godwin's name now, East Carolina, um, which is it's interesting because Godwin's great. He's younger, you know, and I think maybe that has something to do with it. He was an assistant at LSU. He was also an assistant at Ole Miss with Bianco. And I actually thought if Bianco went to LSU, that that's who Ole Miss would pick up after. Yeah, and, and, Ole Miss so, wins, uh, and, think, and Ole Miss would win that scenario, in my opinion, right? Well, I mean, I, look, I like Bianco a lot. I mean, I'm a big fan. I know, I know, and I understand LSU fans, you know, the level – there's a big difference between Ole Miss baseball and LSU baseball. You know, you think LSU baseball is like a family of football, such a basketball level expectations is rightfully huge because of Skip Burtman. <laughs> the best fan buddy. base. Bless and, you, buddy. Yeah, thank you. Um, and so everybody for LSU, you know, Bianco obviously a huge size former catcher for Ben McDonald under Burtman. And, but, you know, everybody looks at his postseason stuff. And if you do that at LSU, you're not going to be making it in 20 years. You make it over all one time. I can tell you that. Uh, but I think you do well at Baton Rouge. I think it's easier to win at LSU with the tradition. Also, it's, you know, some of the rules with LSU, and I don't know what – I hadn't followed everything with Tops anymore, but I know LSU and the Louisiana schools always had a big baseball advantage because they could use their scholarships, the out-of-state guys, and use, like, top stuff to help with in-state. And uh, Mississippi can't do that. So I think Bianco would be good in Baton Rouge. I think he knows the program. I think he recruits well. I think he'd be solid. Uh, but Cliff Godwin, you know, he's up to six and super regional in East Carolina. But, he, he's, uh, you know, he's the best program in the American Athletic Conference year after year. He's consistent. Uh, I think he's really good. He's younger. And I know that that might make him the track. So I, I mean, I feel like both of them. Barrett's Barley Corner. Mints, go hit it up in Omaha, Nebraska. It is a uh, it okay. Is, it is the home for LSU. When LSU fans are there, it's decorated in purple and gold. Uh, Barrett, who is the uh, the bar owner, uh, says he makes his year uh, when LSU is up for the two weeks during the uh, the College World Series. So it's always a bummer for him when uh, when South Louisiana does not make the trip up. Make sure and stop into Barrett's Barley Corner up in Omaha okay. and, uh, and tell them hello. Get yourself a good uh, good, good steak. they got great steak houses all over Omaha. It is a oh, fantastic yeah. trip, Mintz. I, I, I can tell you, man, I've been three times, and uh, all three times I've been twice when LSU has won. I've been once when they, they got knocked out in the quarters, and uh, every single time uh, it is a phenomenal, phenomenal trip. So enjoy it, bro. You've done great work for college baseball, man. Yeah, I feel like I get the, the reward now. I mean, I've been getting it so like people see me catch heat, like keep your head up, man. You do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
fine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Golly, do you have them fooled, bro? Because you ain't worried about shit right now, man. <laughs> Enjoy it, Mincy. Love right. you, man. Right. See you. All right, they go right. Bye. Bye. Arizona, <laughs> Vin Mitz. Just all the way out. Uh, Vin Mitz checking in from Omaha this morning. Uh, anybody been to Omaha in this room? Nobody? Nobody? I Nobody? haven't. I didn't You're know not. you'd been that many times. I've been. I went in 93 uh, when they won it. Uh, me and my grandfather, first time I ever flew in a plane, uh, was, uh, was to Omaha, Nebraska. Um, then we went back in, uh, in 97, uh, and then we were there in 98 when Doug Thompson uh, and that great team, when they were hitting all the home runs, and then the wind changed on them, and they couldn't hit the ball out of the park, and they, they don't want it that year. They were the That's best cool team. That you were there for that. They were the best team there. Uh, and Dougie had trouble fielding a bunt off the mound against USC, I believe, uh, and that ended up being the, the 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 deciding game of that '98 team. But it is always it's very relaxed. I remember my grandfather telling me after we left that game, LSU's going to win tomorrow. They're going to win. <laughs> Their best players uh, playing pinball. Yeah, They're not right. worried about shit. Um, and, but just always the now i have not had any experience with the new rosenblatt with the td ameritrade park uh my my experiences were was always at the old omaha stadium at rosenblatt stadium which uh is very much like a a little league ballpark in the sense of it just it's very uh comfortable it felt like the old box it's the new box compared to the old box i was about to ask you if that's the, the, the proper comparison to I, make, I would, but it I would seems think like i have not been to the new box but i mean to the new td ameritrade park in omaha but a lot of people have who have made that trip jimmy Ott, charles hannagriff guys that were going year in year out who really have a uh a love uh for omaha i mean we used to go watch when we would go in 93 uh and during those 98 we would go to Ott's radio show at Barrett's Barley Corner. Barrett's would house Jimmy Ott for his, his uh, the press box show uh, each afternoon, and we would go to Barrett's uh, as an LSU fan, and it would be nothing but purple and gold. You felt like you were in New Orleans. You felt like you were in the French Quarter uh, because of just how many Louisiana-flavored people uh, were in there. Uh, and we all know the setting. When we all get together, it ain't nothing but a good time. Right, I feel you like there's I mean? a very good reason it was in yes. the afternoon. I mean, like the guy, Barrett. I mean, Barrett of Barrett's Barley Corner. Had, I mean, he would come on Ott's show, or he would tell people that were there. Um, I mean, he's the biggest LSU fan in the world. Because when they get there, he makes his entire year. I mean, kick, it's Christmas. Kick back. Yeah, I mean, it's Christmas. I mean, for two weeks, he's just, uh, you know, he's a, he's a 24-7 bar room. And, and LSU fans are in there all day, every day supporting and drinking and loving and have a good time and um omaha's a great trip i mean i i would love to take my son on that trip even though he's not a big baseball fan he doesn't love the sport like he loves basketball and football and other sports it's still a cool trip and environment to be in because um it always kind of felt um a little down home it felt um you know you were at a college baseball game and a college baseball tournament uh, but it didn't feel corporate. It didn't feel commercial. Um, and That's kind of what they did with the new ballpark, though. I, I would imagine so. I would imagine so. Like I said, I have not been to, to TD Ameritrade and a lot of that, the, those feels. I still remember uh, my, my best Omaha experience being in Rosenblatt Stadium was the 93 semifinal game versus Long Beach State when LSU is down 5-3 going into the bottom of the ninth inning and they put together uh this that when we got home to the hotel is when the night todd walker and i are playing the uh the the, the, the pinball. pinball because when they won that game they put themselves into the national championship game but they were down five three going into the bottom of the ninth uh mike Soratka had pitched an incredible game versus long beach state and um i'll never forget adrian antonini Armando Rios, Jason Williams, and Todd Walker all came up in the bottom of the ninth inning, and for whatever reason, Long Beach State pitched to Todd Walker. They could have, I mean, they, they could have walked him, if I remember correctly, and he knocked in two runs or a game-winning run, and that's when Armando Rios throws his helmet into the, into the, the, the bleachers that day uh, with, his, with his left hand when LSU... Uh, won that game. I still have chills it's thinking about to me it. That you remember all that kind of detail. I mean, I I, re I remember <laughs> where we were sitting. 
Oh, yeah, especially at that age, dude. It's just like that's when your brain is firing on all cylinders for sports. If all that's right. what you're into, you like take it. It's like you're a beautiful mind. Sure. Like, you're like, and your parents are like, are you smart? Like, no, I'm not. Like, I don't know why I remember these things. Oh, but. that's how I would fool my, my people. I mean, I could give them dates, times, names, colleges, people of, of sports, wherever they went. But then they would ask me for a division equation. I'd what time like, it is today? Excuse like, me? <laughs> what do you mean? I had no I don't idea. What, I don't know what day it is. Yeah, right. I could care less about that stuff. what you in your stuff. everyday life? Sports knowledge or division? equations exactly exactly um but but those days are why i got into this business right you know what i mean I'm like sure. that's that's why you get into sports if it gives commentating you commentating is because it just i remember being young saying to myself i'm limited i can't do much but i got to be around sports because i know it and i'm comfortable and i can talk it and and um, experiences like that from Omaha uh, live on. I mean, you, I, I'll remember that for the rest of my life. I, I, I have the feeling. I can see it. I can smell it. I can see my grandfather sitting right next to me with his intensity and watching the game. And oh, all really of that, cool. all of those uh, memories are, are some of my best sports memories as a kid are from Omaha, Nebraska, just sitting inside of Rosenblatt Stadium watching LSU turn into the giant of the sport uh, and then having, like, the cool experiences of going back to the team hotel and watching all that stuff happen. Skip smoking the cigar in the, <laughs> in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the lobby and, you know, just, just all the cool stuff, Mr. Lipsy and Wally McMakin and all the people that were around during that time of watching LSU grow into the giant that it is now. And it goes to show how much how invested LSU is. Not only not only you remembering Armando Rios, but then Ryan Taro seeing that seeing that moment and doing exactly. the exact same thing. Because I watched Rios do it whenever they scored, so we did the exact same celebration. That's exactly. And right. it goes to show why this LSU baseball hire is so important. Yeah, because everybody right. gives a shit about it. Yeah. Uh, remember daily here on the Jordy Colada Show, RMB Builders, Rhett Bourgeois and his crew over at RMB getting you set up over at RMB Builders. If you need a custom made home, if you need reconstruction around the house if you need a commercial project done they are uh, commercially licensed over at rmb stop in and see red bourgeois crew rmb-builders.com rmb-builders.com to get in touch uh with those guys over there we were talking uh, a little earlier uh about some uh some accolades coming out for uh for landon marceau and marceau was named uh, all american um uh, along with dylan cruz on uh, on Thursday, Cruz and Trey Morgan were both named uh, collegiate All Americans, uh, freshman All Americans. Um, but uh, Baseball America uh, named uh, Dylan Cruz third team uh, All American, while uh, Landon Marceau was uh, recognized on that third team uh, as well. Some football accolades uh, for LSU: Derek Stingley Jr., Eli Ricks, and uh, Cade York uh, named to the preseason Walter Camp. All-American team uh, going into the season and going into the summer. So uh, some attention for LSU football heading in to this offseason, uh, specifically around those two cornerbacks uh, with Eli Ricks and Derek Stingley Jr. Uh, what a luxury for a, a new incoming defensive coordinator like Durante Jones uh, with a background in, in defensive back play coming out of the NFL to step into his first college coordinator job and have Eli Ricks and Derek Stingley Jr. as your cornerbacks. I think that these two guys, uh, obviously, and I don't think that this is a bold statement judging after watching these guys play the last couple of seasons, but you know, Sting, uh, Stingley more intent of, of two seasons ago. Last year he was, he was nicked, and last year was weird. It was just a, a strange season uh, all in all for LSU football, but – uh, even more for Derek Stingley Jr., who had injuries for tripping over the chain on the sideline at Missouri to just not being able to get right uh, last season going into this year where if you're following him on social media or if you're just keeping up with some LSU football news, he has obviously uh, very much embraced his junior season and looking forward uh, to, to, to having a chance to really restore his reputation from last year and get back to that play uh, that, that, that we were consistently seeing two years ago. And then Eli Ricks, I, I thought Eli Ricks was the best cornerback in college football last year. Uh, I mean, really and truly. I mean, when you watched him uh, each week, he played with a swagger and confidence to him 
that I dare, kind of kicked I, out of games I, quite I a bit. I dare you to test me. Yes. I dare you to test it. And if you do four pick sixes later uh, and a freshman All-American, he is uh, – I, I don't know what you do as a defensive coordinator when you look at these two cats because they both have game-breaking, shut-down ability – uh, on each side of the ball, on each side of uh, of the defense, and you got a guy like Durante Jones who's been running NFL defensive backfields now, calling the plays for him. Be very exciting to watch these two guys. And I don't, run. I don't think he has to dumb it down at all for those for no those way. cats coming from an NFL yeah. scheme, and then you run into two corners that are going to be in the NFL. Like they get all of this stuff. I, like I can run kind of my system if I want to. You couldn't overcoach Stingley at this point. You know what I mean? From I don't think you have to coach him at all. But yeah. you couldn't overcoach him, right? You know what I mean? You can't you can't give him. Um, too much on his plate. Too much. That's why he probably has some room in his brain for offense. You see, he was listed oh, as a benari- on yeah. the generic list. Are y'all going to get into this again? <laughs> <laughs> this is going to happen. I am not. I am, I am not <laughs> getting into this. Um, you know who I hate? You know, Me? I can't Lloyd? stand <laughs> yes. uh, more than Lloyd. Um, is Benifer. Oh, you do? Yes. Why do you hate him? Because it's disgusting. Bro. You hate them or I mean, you hate her? I just hate the concept of it. Uh, I mean, we talk about high school bullshit a lot, and I that's mean, what this like, is. They're back in love. She says they're inseparable now oh. and knows it was meant to be. This is ridiculous, bro. I mean, but, I mean can this, she be alone for a minute? No, clearly not. Has this, she been alone for the last 25 years? Has she, not that I know has of. Has she she's had a window of someone. time where she's not in love, sucking face on some picture in some paparazzi with somebody. Yeah, you're mad about her. You're mad about her. Well, it's an indictment on her character a little bit. It's like, can you not take a beat? How much attention do you need? (laughs) It pisses me off for her kids. I know. And especially because, well, and she said that her kids are like smitten with Ben. How does she know? She didn't even talk to him. How old are they? (laughs) I don't know. I mean, I think they're, oh, 13-year-old twins. And, but I think there's another one too, right? Or does she only have thirteen? Well, I'm sure that I'm sure she's got plenty she's, gallivanting around. Town. Seriously, the fact she's only got two is a well, great she testament. She would know for... that. It's not like a man. <laughs> well, just we like, wouldn't. I don't know how many kids I might have. Jesus, I mean, she well, would have to birth them. <laughs> she's been in multiple. That one back they in '97. Yeah. You know how many kids she has? The one that got away. <laughs> the one that yeah, the, I left one on on the blo- on well, Jenny on the block. I left no one over there. The one that got away, according to her. I mean, oh sure. She says that that was the one that got away. I mean, she was upset when they broke up, and now they're back. I mean, who knows? This could be it for her. We, maybe this is, maybe he's the one. Ah, uh, uh, Katie. <laughs> Lord, Girls me. will always believe in Are love. Are you kidding me? But yeah, why not? You I gotta mean, believe in yeah, love. Yeah, why not? I mean, I mean if hope. you want to just throw a Hail Mary at her and see if this one sticks, but I mean, look at her track record. I know. It, you know it's I mean? not a good look. As that soon it's been as like he, as soon as he asks her to marry her or take that next step, she's going to be thinking of her exit strategy. I mean, they that's your go to move. She's, they could already she's be not back committing. engaged again. She's not. No way. I think she's just a ring collector. No way. She just wants to have any of these engagement rings, rings she can if they get. Were, if they it's were engaged, she'd be yeah. on the cover of People magazine. <laughs> all right. She has got some rings. She's the Tom Brady of entertainment. <laughs> yes. She is. She is. But, dude, we were, we were on up. Uh, I think at the beginning of this, we kind of felt bad for A Rod. But yeah. now I think yeah. he's kind of no, living his A-Rod best life. Yeah. yeah. He's, be. uh, he's smoking cigars with the David Ortiz in his backyard. He's playing basketball wearing like makeup he, yeah, yeah. Um, he's, of course but I mean I think the man's happier now I think he got like he took a step away he's like Jesus Christ wow. I was going through a lot is Whoa, that what I was Lord. dealing with she but completely I mean, hoodwinked what me what is it wow. like for him a month and a half after calling off your engagement and watching her like making out with Ben Affleck well, for the all first, over town the, the first kids, the first two weeks it's got to be grueling the, hurt, it's gotta the kids be have to be the hurtful just part just smashing for him. just stomping on the heart but then I mean, you've got that you've got that moment, right, where like the light clicks and you're like, wait, 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 wait. wait. Post I mean, nut clarity. Okay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what did I just do? <laughs> True. But it, had, it it seems a little insensitive for her because they were a family, his kids and her kids and the two of them, and then just ended a month and a half ago. Bro, you she's break the up that family person dynamic. In Hollywood. But for her kids, I mean, like that's that's tough. I feel like it's tough on the kids. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. It's they probably the have a credit card. I think they'll be fine. Oh, I mean, they're definitely, <laughs> li- they're, probably they are definitely <laughs> living a life of no discipline. They don't know anything. Yeah, they, don't, yeah. they don't know what's going on. But, I mean, I, I saw some paparazzi camera the other day at her sister's birthday. Mm-hmm. And her and Affleck are just, like, they might as well have just been on the table. Yeah. They might have just, just cleared <laughs> the, the stuff off the table. <laughs> All the time. And just put, it, like, put her on the table, bro. All I the mean, pictures of them they're are like sucking that. face. Yeah. They're all, like cuddled up and then like the kids are like walking by like showing her stuff on the ipad and like on the iphone like asking her questions 
And meanwhile, she's like straddling this guy in public. It's like, <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> What Mommy, is, is this you? What is going on? It man? is strange. It is strange. Leak the tape. Very weird. <laughs> uh, we'll talk Hollywood with Nathan Velasquez. <laughs> You're so up mad. Here. It, it, is, it pisses so me off for the kids. <laughs> pisses me off for her. I know. For I the know. kids. I'm with you. It's about Twins. the kids. It's, it's all about children. the kids. Think about the kids. Think about the kids. Joy Collada show love the kids, man. <laughs> <laughs> All about them kids. They don't even man. know what state they're in. They're just like, where are we going next? Hop yeah, on the right. private plane. We're in Miami or LA, no, mom. We, yeah, what time zone is it? house are we yeah. at? Doesn't matter. Seems like they're taking it to LA now. Um, Daily, we're brought to you by True Blue Water. Yes. True Blue Water, which we had dropped off uh, after we finished our last batch. And they're great. True Blue Water. That's T-R-U, bluewater.com. Yeah. Uh, you great can find service. them online. Uh, Local. And they're great. Yes. Hi. What's the Hi Mai? They also deliver Mai Hai. Yes, Hi Mai. Always my get my that high. right. Mai Hai water, bottled water. They're amazing. Uh, all right. When we come back, we'll talk Hollywood with Nathan Velasquez here on the Jordy Colada Show. May have saved our life. Yeah. The water? <laughs> yes. 100%. <laughs> Are you self-employed? Then you need to learn about Angel Oak's Home Loans Bank Statement Program that they're offering, which makes you eligible as a self-employed borrower to purchase or refinance a home without requiring a tax return. If you want to learn more, get in touch with me. Email me, jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn about the Bank Statement Loan Program offered by Angel Oak. jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn more. Gearing up for spring and summer down here in South Louisiana and you want to keep your lawn maintained during these sunny seasons, get in touch with our friend Blake Abair over at Abair's Lawn Maintenance where he says, you grow it, I mow it. 225-485-8022. 225-485-8022 is where you can find Abair's Lawn and Maintenance, the official lawn and maintenance company of the undisclosed location. Go Chevrolet is proud to announce Go Express Auto Sales, the new used car lot located in the capital city of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Go Express Auto Sales is online at goexpressautosales.com or you can search them on Facebook and social media at Go Express Auto Sales, the newest addition to the family of Go Chevrolet. Remember, Go Chevrolet is located down in Laplace, Louisiana, but now welcoming aboard Go Express, the new used car lot located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Are you self-employed? Then you need to learn about Angel Oak's Home Loans Bank Statement Program that they're offering, which makes you eligible as a self-employed borrower to purchase or refinance a home without requiring a tax return. If you want to learn more, get in touch with me. Email me. Jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn about the bank statement loan program offered by Angel Oak. Jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn more. Welcome back into this Friday edition of the Jordy Colada Show, live here from the UDL. Remember, each Friday we talk to Nathan Velasquez, who is the five-minute critic. He is a must-follow on Twitter. Got to hit him on YouTube to keep up with the latest of uh, his breakdowns over at the five-minute critic. Uh, we will review A Quiet Place 2 this morning as uh, it was. It? Uh, I have not. 
I have neither. Not. Have you? Nobody no, on here I saw, is. I saw Cruella. Has, That's the only movie uh, I've seen recently. <laughs> Nathan Nathan has. Has. It was fire. I haven't seen A Quiet Place too, but I've seen Cruella. Cruella. No, I would pick Cruella <laughs> over The Quiet Place. It was awesome. Uh, Nathan, is, Nathan is here with us. Nathan, what do you think about that analysis? Wait, I, I think there's a little, a little talking over each other there. I think Lloyd, did you say that you were you're choosing Cruella over a quiet place? He did. Yes, it was awesome, dude. I mean, I was in the right state of mind, but the <laughs> the visuals and the way it was presented, all the and the way it was filmed, I thought it was awesome. What Emma state Stone of mind did an are you in? Hi, it was, but, <laughs> but it was awesome. Like the way it was filmed and the way, like I loved everything about it. I've Emma heard Stone that. did a great like job of unearthing. It was like a female Joker almost, but a little not as dark. I want to see. I haven't had the time or made the time to go and see that yet. It's actually from the director of I Tanya, which I, I love. It has I, a lot Tanya. of those vibes. And, yeah. Yeah. Really. Well, I, I really want to. I mean, now see, Lloyd, on on your notes there, I, I'll <laughs> make time this weekend to go and check it out. Yes. But you got to go see a Quiet Place too. You got to check it out. All right. I'll, we'll go I one for I one didn't there. See the first Quiet Place. I was told not to. That it would like give me too much anxiety. Dialogue's great. With the kids. Who told you not to do it? My, my husband. He said, don't watch it. <laughs> it it's actually not that scary. Like, it, it, but not in, not like, not in a part. bad way. It's like the kids dying okay. part, I think. That's what Spoiler alert. Uh, That's Quiet yeah. Place you don't like, That's Quiet Place. You're not a fan of kids dying. not a fan of the kids dying. Of kids dying. I'm really not. Well, see, that. That's what I. That's what I'm all about all the time. <laughs> so like, I love child death. <laughs> the five minute critic Nathan Velasquez. Is he from China? Very popular here Put on the, on the show. That's Put right. it on the poster. <laughs> uh, Nathan, another uh, flop at the box office uh, with uh, with, with um, losing uh, heights uh, came uh, losing uh, almost uh, 150 million dollars. Uh, catch our yeah. listeners up on this one. Well, we'll get to A Quiet Place 2 because A Quiet Place 2 kept the top spot in the box office. People were predicting that this movie, In the Heights, was going to, you know, soar, take the number one spot. It cost like $50 million to make. And because it was supposed to come out before COVID, they did a whole, like, campaign for it. So they put a bunch of money into advertising it. Then, obviously, they had to push it back. So they had to do a whole other campaign. And so the money that it had to make, it's, $200 $200 million this movie has to make until it breaks even. Ugh. After $200 million to make a profit. So, you know, and, and it's an uphill battle. You want to give it like a little bit of, you know, grace there because they pretty much had to dump in two entire ad campaigns into this movie. But first weekend, it's predicted they're going to make $20 million. They come in just over 11, which that is <laughs> just pathetic. It's, that's a very, very pathetic showing. And pretty much everyone over at Warner Brothers is saying, oh, it's because of COVID. No one wants to go and watch this movie because uh, it's because of COVID, which doesn't make any sense at all. Like, A Quiet Place 2, after being open for three weeks, made like twice the amount of money that this movie made on opening weekend. So I, I don't know what that says. I know that we've got franchises all the time. We've got sequels. Those are the only things that really seem to make money nowadays. Like I said, I haven't seen In the Heights. I, I can't speak to whether or not it's good or not. But this is clearly a movie that people were not excited to see. Seems like a misstep so far. Maybe it'll make money back, but this is looking like it's going to be uh, one of those stories of uh, cautionary tale. Losing a lot of money here. Nathan, is it surprising to see big budget films still today when, when so many so many are just being pumped out? Wait, you're saying it's surprising to see so many big budget films? Yes, or, or not so many, but to see big budget films still being made like like this one. Well, it's in terms of what a studio a studio actually has more security if they're going to spend. Generally speaking, they have more security if they're going to spend a ton of money and pumping out all of these massive movies with huge budgets and attach a star to it. And whether or not it does well critically, whether or not it has a lot of long longevity after it's out of the theater, the formula pretty much shows you're going to at least make your money back uh, if you spend upwards of the $60, $70 million mark. And I think that the quality of movies that kind of do that has been going down recently. And there is, this is the really the, the test that people like Netflix and Hulu are doing, is that actually we might be the market might be moving more in a way where it's better to actually make 15 
two million dollar movies yes. and spread all of this content out instead of saying, okay, Warner Brothers are going to put out ten movies this year, and each one's going to cost a hundred million dollars. And if one of those flops, which this one is, yeah. you're in you're in shit, and they're in pretty deep shit right now at this one. Right. I mean, that's that, that's my, would be my theory. I mean, if you just look around and you have, uh, you know, the ability to have four successes compared to one and that one being at a, at a three million dollar price tag or a two million dollar price tag like you say compared to this one that's a 150 million dollar price tag i mean if you swing and miss on the 150 your year is shot i think everyone right now and, and I, I feel like hopefully they will these massive studios will start making more smaller budget movies but all of these studios want to replicate the marvel thing uh, everyone wants to have a series of movies. And honestly, I mean, this is kind of getting into a quiet place a little bit. Most of these larger movies that take place in these universes, these worlds, they're not so much movies individually. They're more like, uh, it's like an insurance policy for the studio to know, you know what, maybe the, maybe the third movie isn't going to move the story along very much, which a quiet place doesn't really move the story along, but you know, people, Love the first one. We're probably going to make a TV show out of it. We're going to put it on our streaming service. And it starts turning into more of a brand than a movie. And I, that, that's the other option. If they're not going to do smaller movies at a larger level of quantity, they're probably going to do fewer movies like this and just pray, pray to God that people are going to then sign up for the TV show that's going to come out. Go and see all the movies. Give all of their brand loyalty to whatever multiverse they're creating. Has, uh, has anybody done a better job of that than Fast and Furious? You know what? I've seen, like, two of the Fast and oh, Furious no, I haven't movies. seen Something... any of them. I think they're awful, but they've created this <laughs> brand around them when they have this niche fan base that they are absolutely love it because they've made none of the fucking things. I don't quite get what's going on with Fast and Furious. <laughs> I, saw, real. I, saw, I saw a poster this morning on, like, the side of a bus, and it's just John Cena walking out of Blue Smoke. And the critic quote is, it destroys the hype and becomes one of the greatest <laughs> movies of the year. It's like, really? Really? Fast and Furious 9 is going to become one of the greatest movies of the year. What, what, what is this? It's unbelievable. I mean, it's, it's, it's got to be the, the biggest boondoggle. I mean, just in, in Hollywood. <laughs> it's got to be. Uh, Nathan, tell me about uh, Quiet Place 2, how it is staying atop the, uh, the box office uh, charts. This is one that people really need to go and see in theaters because I'll say there, there are negative sides to it. The characters are nowhere near as complex or interesting as the first movie. Um, the story is kind of funny how little progression is actually made. If you go and look at the synopsis on like IMDb, it says there is more danger outside of the farm than just the monsters. And you watch the movie and it's like, but there was no, there was actually no danger. The, the synopsis of this movie is actually just, just a lie. It's kind of like a, it's a playground to deal with the conceit, which is, is, for anyone that doesn't know, you've got these monsters that are roaming the earth, and any sound that you make attracts them, and you're pretty much dead in five seconds flat. Now, that side of it, everything with the monsters, everything with these guys to be quiet, that suspense trick that they have in this movie is actually really, really scary. So it's, it's kind of a, you know, bittersweet feeling of something that is actively very terrifying, but there's not really a great story going on here or great characters, but I would recommend, because it's so scary, if you like that, go see it in IMAX. Uh, have you seen The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard? I haven't. And this, this I, I'm pretty sure this is a sequel, I think, isn't it? It is, it is. It's Ron Reynolds' sequel. I, didn't see, Samuel, I did not see the first one either. Yeah, uh, I didn't either. I thought you just watched then. movies. What, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> not going to lie, not the biggest Ryan Reynolds fan. I, oh. I usually has got to be a, a huge, uh, huge recommendation in order to do that. Deadpool was great, though. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, what are you watching right now? Anything streaming? Uh, just, anything streaming? I just finished uh, Succession, actually. Oh, oh nice. how good was that? Oh, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. I honestly, the... The trick that they pull in that last episode, I, I feel like an idiot for not having seen it coming, but holy shit. Yes. I mean, I, I should have just waited and not watched it until the third season was closer, because now I've got to at like a year and a half. Do, but, no. do you have an idea of a comparison to Billions, or, or have you seen Billions to compare it to that? 
have not, I have not watched uh, Billions, but I do, from what I've heard of people that really like Billions, this feels like the same type of uh, hmm. deceit from groups of people that are, you know, tight knit in these like huge corporate structures. So it, it sounds very much like a comparison to Billions. Yeah, I've seen both. Succession is more of a real time story. It feels like it could actually happen while Billion just like fantasizes the idea of being a billionaire and having like a few money. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, how, oh, is, how is the city? The how is the city? Oh, the city! The city is fantastic. It, the thing that I wasn't a fan of of LA was just how spread out everything was. It took you forever to go and do anything. Like the immediacy of everything here, and it's you go around the country. This place still has you know more of the, the mass than you would normally see. But I mean, it's pretty much. I feel like the masking is now just kind of part of the landscape. You kind of forget about all that. The level of uh, fast pace that's going on in New York City. It, it, you can't really rival it. I absolutely love that. I don't know if maybe I just have a problem with like loving anxiety and stress, but there's <laughs> plenty of it here. And uh, I'm a fan. like a speed freak. <laughs> <laughs> I know a guy. <laughs> um, uh, I, hate to go to, I hate to go to this route, but how canceled is Lynn Ma- manuel Mirandez? That's the part that I don't quite get. I mean, I assume you're talking about the statement that he made about the diversity statement, I think, unless I've missed another no, story. No, yeah, everybody's just kind of picked up on, on him on Twitter with not casting the, maybe the appropriate amount of Latino people, which it seems to happen, mm-hmm. in, even though he's right. a Latino himself. That's the other part that I didn't quite understand. Is, uh, on The Hollywood Reporter and IndieWire, you kind of, and, and I've, I've kind of been thinking about this a bit, I want to put out a video within like the next month to kind of dissect the why it's so difficult for these newer type movies to really land with an audience. It's a little disconcerting that most of these producers and writers in Hollywood, they're looking at the failure in the hype and they're saying, we've got two problems to why this didn't work. We've got COVID, which I think is ridiculous. And then you've got Lin-Manuel Miranda is writing this whole thing about how there's a lack of diversity in the movie. Again, I haven't seen it. It doesn't look like there's a huge lack of diversity. And I'd also be surprised if this movie is losing $150 million because of that. Well, it's the wrong. But, uh, it's, uh, oh, I'm sorry. It, it, apparently, it's the wrong type of diversity. They're not. Uh, they're not the right. Um, I don't know how to say it uh, delicately. They're not the right mix of Latino. It's mm-hmm. supposed to be um, African American and Mexican Latinos, and he cast the uh, just the, the the wider version of that. Apparently. Yeah. Well, I hope Lynn Man Well Miranda is okay with his unemployment, and you know, hopefully, he's got enough money. <laughs> I think he'll be okay. He I think will. he'll be okay too. Uh, he will. Nathan, enjoy the weekend, buddy. We will speak to you next uh, next Friday, the Five Minute Critic. Make sure and check it out on YouTube. Make sure and check them out on social media, uh, as uh, there will be uh, coming up today. Uh, you will be breaking. Is it today? You're breaking down the Quiet Place too. Yep. Go more in depth on that. I'll also have a live stream at 4 p.m. Eastern time. If people want to join in, or we'll just be talking movies. See you, bro. Have a good weekend. Bye. See ya. Jennifer's a waste of time. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'll you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wait, can we stay on the movie track in honor of Father's Day? And yeah. Talk about some sure. of the best and worst movie dads. Um, Who are your best? Oh man, and best worst movie, dad. movie dads. Worst movie dad. I have my best and worst. I think. Worst movie Pick dad, off. just off the top of the head. I don't know if this is even in the right realm. But the rookie with Dennis Quaid, his dad's a real dick. Is like, he? he never wants him to play baseball, and the grandpa has to teach him how to play uh, baseball. And it's just, you know, yeah. don't crush your kid's dreams that early. And he made it to the league anyway. Wow. Uh, best dad has to be... Uh, golly, we'll be right back here on the Jordy Galata Show. Let me think about it here for a couple of minutes. All Brought right. to you daily by Go Chevrolet. <laughs> That's a great Are you self-employed? Then you need to learn about Angel Oak's Home Loans Bank Statement Program that they're offering, which makes you eligible as a self-employed borrower to purchase or refinance a home without requiring a tax return. If you want to learn more, get in touch with me. Email me, jordy at jordycoladashow.com, to learn about the Bank Statement Loan Program offered by Angel Oak. jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn more. Gearing up for spring and summer down here in South Louisiana and you want to keep your lawn maintained during these sunny seasons, get in touch with our friend Blake Abair over at Abair's Lawn Maintenance where he says, you grow it, I mow it. 225-485-8022, 225-485-8022. 
485-8022 is where you can find A Bears Lawn and Maintenance, the official lawn and maintenance company of the undisclosed location. Go Chevrolet is proud to announce Go Express Auto Sales, the new used car lot located in the capital city of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Go Express Auto Sales is online at goexpressautosales.com or you can search them on Facebook and social media at Go Express Auto Sales, the newest addition to the family of Go Chevrolet. Remember, Go Chevrolet is located down in Laplace, Louisiana, but now welcoming aboard Go Express, the new used car lot located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Welcome back here to the Jordy Colada show here on this Friday. Katie with an interesting question going into the final break today. You want me to start with mine? Uh, no, but it's, I can tell that you want to just start with yours. <laughs> you're ready. You want to get taken 100%. Yes. My head already, go ahead. Go ahead. You got it. All right. I think my best would be Furious from Boys in the Hood. That's Trey's who I had. No, it's Lawrence not. Fishburne. Yes, Lawrence, Lawrence Fishburne. Fishburne. Yes, that's who I had. Stop it. It is. That's awesome. Because okay. he is a great. He is a great. He movie is a dad. great movie dad. I a love that movie. movie. I think my worst. I mean, this is kind of random, but it just <laughs> has to come to mind. Is um. Jack Nicholson in The Shining. Yes. <laughs> right? it's got, I mean, I thought about him. <laughs> I mean, you don't get much worse than that, I guess. I mean, or I guess a, you can, he's but a killer, that's a bad bro. one. That's a bad I mean, one. But I, mean, I, I would say almost best movie dad. He's working so hard to provide for his family, it drives him mad. Are you talking about Jack Nicholson? Yes. Oh, you're I saying mean, he's the best He would be dad? the best movie dad. That's the rigors uh, of fatherhood. Yeah. That's he, what the movie is about. Up stuff. It's about the father <laughs> trying his best for his family and still can't provide. So what do you do? You go crazy. I guess so. Yeah. He did some messed up stuff. Uh, <laughs> give me Nicolas Cage in Raising Arizona as yes. best. Yes. yes. Best one scene dad. Yes. Oh <laughs> and see, I had another one that I didn't know if best or worst. Mufasa from I love The Lion King. don't know best okay. or worst. Okay. <laughs> because, well, Mufasa protecting his kid, but also died but on the he's job. Probably uh, worst. Nathan has a good one, the five minute critic inside of you, inside of our uh, bunker chat app. Uh, Liam Nelson and Taken. Oh, oh yeah. all time. I mean, yes. Lee, he's one of the best. Great one. But also a bad movie dad for letting her go on the trip. He tried, I guess he tried to stop her bad movie mom. If you've seen, if you've seen yeah. Taken, yeah, yeah, yeah. he yeah. didn't want her to go mom. on the trip. Yeah. And what about she was, Clark Griswold, right? Like, that's like the all-time. He's a great one. Yeah. He's a great uh, one. John Weatherspoon in uh, Friday. Yeah. Th that was going to be fantastic. That was going to be mine. Every <laughs> time I'm in the kitchen, you're in the goddamn <laughs> kitchen eating up all of <laughs> that, that bowl of cereal in Friday is the most ridiculous thing of all time. <laughs> Just puts dad. it in a huge salad bowl, and he's like, he yeah, might, a breakfast. He oh might God. be the funniest dad. Oh, yeah. Like, as far as, yeah. like, just... Humor goes. I mean, he is every every time he opens his mouth, you could laugh. It's something funny. It, it really is. I mean, every time he says anything in Friday, you could laugh. Uh, and Adam in the bunker said Darth Vader. I was thinking that too. <laughs> That's a bad one. <laughs> right? That's a bad one. I would, I'll, a bad you could also go best because he just wants his son back. Yeah. You know, the fight for your child. I would. Uh, Big Tom Callahan, Tommy Boy, great yes. dad. Oh, Tom, that's a great that's dad. A good one. Big Tom Callahan for that's sure. That's a good one. That's a I great love one. Tom, Tom Callahan. Uh, I'm trying to think of bad ones. Yeah, I mean, we've named some pretty bad ones. What about, I can't believe you hadn't said Don Corleone. Yes, I was going to say Vito one. Corleone is mm -hmm. one of the best. Yeah. Um, uh, someone Godfather. in the bunker said American Pie. He's a good one, he that guy. Good dad. Eugene, Eugene, Levy, Eugene Levy. And yes, yeah. that, I mean, a guy that just is trying to be such a cool I dad and ends up being like the worst dad ever. <laughs> He's so funny. <laughs> he plays it great. He does. <laughs> just going to give you some condoms and some magazines. Here you go. He go does. on your merry way. Yes, he does. This apple pie tastes great. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how many people tried that after that movie. 
Yeah. Legitimately? Yeah, because like, I'm sure one person at least was like more, a, a lot yeah. more than one. Because that probably traveled to a 13 year old. You people, we're going right back one. to that conversation a lot again. More than you, one. People. Uh, you people, you people, you people. It's the perfect temperature. Would anybody admit to that? I think you would have to get caught. Yeah. God, what a thing to get caught doing. I mean, how do you explain that other than? I'm just too horny. I guess it's better to get caught by your parents, like, actually having sex with someone than having sex with an apple pie. Yes. Right? Yes. I yeah. mean, at least you can be like, what? Good, good on you, kid. You get a fist bump from dad on the way <laughs> out, but that, you're just like, what do we have? Are we going to a Sit clinic? Sit down. Yeah. Let's talk. We're not doing that again. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, there is some cooth in this. And there's less expensive ways to do it. Like I said, it takes a lot to make a, an apple pie. Right. There's I mean, a lot of ingredients you have to buy. Is that your mom's recipe? Yeah. <laughs> is, is that incest? If Are you, you going to tell her or am I? <laughs> it might be incest to have sex with your mom's apple pie. Oh, uh, this is a good one from Adam uh, E. We'll call him inside of the Eskews? bunkers. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's my boy. Okay, Adam yeah. Eskews. Uh, Mrs. Doubtfire. Yeah. Yes. That's yes. a good dad right there. Yes. Right? Uh, Scott Oldham said Thanksgiving would be awkward every year <laughs> after the yeah. after the apple pie incident. And do you not make an apple pie You've every Thanksgiving? To. Just, You've just got a little to. nudge. And if you were a cool dad, you're making a joke. joke yeah. right? Hey, Junior. <laughs> Why don't you cut the cake? Pass that, <laughs> pass that apple pie. Don't let him get to it first. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Grandpa, you might have to get it out of Junior's hand. He might bang the thing. I didn't know it had a cream filling. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> uh let's see here. Patrick Kimry, Anthony Hopkins, Legends of the Fall. Uh god, Phil it's been Dunphy. A while since I've seen that. Oh, great uh, TV dad. Yes. Great TV dad. If you've oh, ever yeah. seen uh Outside Providence with Alec Baldwin. I have not. You have not. He's I, a good to or me, bad? He's a great dad. Okay. Bad uh, real life dad, good movie bad dad. Bad real life dad, but in Outside Pro Outside Providence is my favorite Alec Baldwin film. Uh, okay, he's I've got, never seen, seen that. He's got You're the, a low key movie guy. He's yeah, got the really Providence. Are. He's got the Providence accent. That's because he doesn't sleep. Um, that's right. <laughs> um, it, it Do you is, even watch a whole movie, or I you like start and then you like fast forward? It through takes me probably about three through. times to watch a whole movie. <laughs> I can see uh, that. But outside Providence, I will watch start to finish every single time. Uh, my favorite of Alec Baldwin's films. Okay, I'll have to check that uh, out. Yes, check that one out. Oh, boot. Uh, Will Smith in The Pursuit of Happiness. Okay. All time, yeah, Dad. I mean, talk about working hard, that but he movie, actually, yeah, like, it'll, it'll get the tear out of you. I, every time I ball in that movie. Uh, uh, Bruce Willis in Armageddon. Yes. Oh, so it's upset. He's so sacrifice. So upset Great with Ben dad. Affleck. I guess I'll just jump on this moon and save the world real quick. Yeah, no big deal. And ben, ben Affleck go, wins again. Yes. Yeah, he does. Gets the, scene, the girl. The scene with the animal cracker. Is just so, so sexual, and it's like nobody's ever done this, I and it hate worked. That scene. Right? Yeah, it is a weird scene. That's a dumb scene. That's it's that's such to like me. '90s, 2000s. Like this is how we're gonna sexualize this event. Yeah. Like very not really sex. Yeah, yes. You think? Oh, they probably reenacted it immediately. Yes. They're totally reenacting <laughs> animal crackers. You got animal cookies, Ben. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's his favorite snack. Yeah, I bet you do, Jen. Which one of you let them that to you first? Uh, Schwarzenegger and Commando says Patrick Kimry. Never seen it. Never seen Commando. I Never don't think seen I have either. Oh, um, uh, I'm just looking at a list. I think we're all looking at the same list. How about Rocky? Leaves his kid behind to go fight the Russian. That's bad dad. So worse dad. Uh, save the world. Cold save, War. Save, yeah, save America. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean <laughs> this is bigger than couple, you. A couple of ways to look at it. Yes. Uh, the dad and um, meet the parents. Good dad, bad dad. Uh, yeah, is that a mix of Is that De Niro? Dad? Yes. Robert yeah. De Niro? I'm watching uh, you, Faka. Yeah, I would say that that would be... Uh, That'd be a good dad. Very protective. Yes. Uh, yes, but, but be, bad father-in-law. I'd, I'd have to be very high to get that one. I bet you would, fucker. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you would, paint them all red. <laughs> oh, Kim, she's fat. <laughs> P-H-A-T. Oh, my gosh. But they're, I love when they're playing volleyball. They're all huddled up, and he's trying to make his way into the circle. <laughs> Excuse me. Dude, Stiller's <laughs> underrated. He's he such is. a good actor, man. He's, he he's got funny down more than people think. Tropic Thunder is an all-time movie Tropic in my Thunder mind. Tropic Thunder is awesome. Yes. And um, the model, what's the um, the model one? When he's the model. Oh, Zoolander. Zoolander. Yeah, Zoolander. Love Zoolander. Zoolander. Always love Zoolander. Uh, let's see. Do you here. have Father's Day plans? Happy Father's Day, by the way. Happy Thank Father's you. Day weekend. Sunday. Thank you. Yes, Sunday. So sure. you're not. Yes. Um, Best thinking about a beach trip dad. next week, so we might be out of here on uh, on Monday after the show for a couple of days. Uh, have you put that uh, on the calendar yet? I have not, <laughs> just because it was it was tall to us. Uh, it was a little impromptu and. Um, I'm hoping else you can get a coach before then so we can give a reaction. 
Yeah. Uh, but just a couple of days. You away. know what's going to happen? Sylvester Stallone and Over the Top. That, I'm, that, that they're going to go. They're going to go. You're going to be gone. They're going to ha- uh, announce. That's okay. We can do something. Yeah. Wait. What is Sylvester? What? Uh, over the top is a uh, arm wrestling. Oh, uh, I was movie. like, wait, what does that have to do with the coach? <laughs> <laughs> how, uh, how many ideas do you have to have in a room to where they promote? They're like, yeah, we'll give the go ahead to an arm wrestling movie. Like that was never a popular enough thing to I where you can make a whole movie it around be, it. It just had to be Stallone. I don't think it's it's the oh it's the, the actor the carries movie. the I think idea. Stallone comes to you and says, hey, look, Rocky and Rambo. After you know what I mean, y'all want to do some. Yeah, you want to flex the well, guns? Well, I'm still a huh? Good lord. Put the forearms on me, huh? You want to show these things <laughs> on? The reason he brought it up, he wanted to flex on camera. Right? <laughs> um, let's see, anybody else in here that makes sense for a worst TV dad? John Q, Denzel. John Q. It's a great Never TV saw dad. Never saw Never it. Never saw it. I wouldn't see it if I was a dad either. It's probably too much. Al Bundy? Ted uh, Bundy. Yeah, Ted. He wasn't Al, a dad. Al Bundy wouldn't last. Right? He wouldn't last. Two shows in today's in twenty twenty one. Well, no, you saw what happened to Roseanne. Yeah, and they're they're cut from the same cloth of that old school. Uh, yeah. Todd Ohms, Jordy, do you still keep in touch with Moscona? I do. Yes, we do trade. Good dad. Uh, yes, Moscona, good dad. Good dad. Very good dad. Uh, T Bob as well, keep in touch with him too. A very good dad. Um, so, Sean Penn and Mystic River, great dad. Says Kelly Calandro. Never seen that either. Oh, mama. Uh, oh, Guido dad. Is that a shot of an Italian? Ooh. <laughs> um, all right. So it is uh, Father's Day weekend. Everybody out there, enjoy your Father's Day weekend. Uh, make sure you tell the kids around you that you love them. Uh, enjoy and the dads. them. And the yeah, dads. Ipso, yeah, that, ipso facto. Leave me alone on Father's Day. Yeah, see, that's what is my... That, no. Is that what you like? Because, no, you know, no, there's no, two no, camps. No. There's I want to be alone and away from my kids on Mother and Father's Day, uh-uh. or I want to be with them. No, I want to be with them. I want See, to be my dad wants to be with us, but he doesn't want a big production. He loves, that would be more my style. He loves that the U.S. Open is on. It's U.S. Open Sunday. So that just come watch, come watch the yeah. match. Come watch the last round of golf with me. That and, would be and, yeah, and I love style. to do that, too. So yeah. it's perfect. I Little Jay's son. around. That's good enough for yeah. me. Yeah. That's good enough for no me. No fuss. I just don't want to fuss. Right. Don't make it an ordeal. Keep it quiet right. back yeah. here. But it and is no good, drama. It's good to have you here. Yes. My boy Ned, Rebecca McBride says in the bunker. Who's that? Ned. Ned. Is that a Is that a dad? Ted, is that a TV dad? Is that not your dad's name? Maybe no. Dad. <laughs> dad's name is Russell Russell T, <laughs> the doctor. Um, <laughs> all right, so happy uh, Happy Father's Day weekend out there. Good week for uh, for everybody uh, here on the Jordy Collada Show for stopping by. Thanks for everybody for the interaction. Go Chevrolet drives us each week. Remember online at geaux Chevrolet dot com in the place. Uh, in Laplace, Louisiana, Laplace, Louisiana. Go see Michael Divinity and their crew over there and pick up a new ride this weekend. Uh, enjoy the weekend. Happy Father's Day. Uh, LSU, have a baseball coach when we come back on Monday morning? Yes or no? Who knows? Yes it's or no? It's been five days of wondering. Lloyd, yes or no? LSU baseball coach Monday morning when we come back here? No. Okay. No, that'd be good for our... Uh, Your beach, Jay? That would, no, that would be good for our uh, our theory of... Uh, That's what I'm thinking. I'm right. I think this is... I think we're on the right... We're on the right... Feels arena. Like we are. Yes, it would have been done If by we now. get through today, I think we're, we're definitely good. If, if it doesn't happen by the Friday, uh, like by today in the Omaha and everything like that, I think it rides out and the, the suspicion continues. I agree. I agree. Uh, watch Outside Providence this weekend if you have a chance. I'd love to hear a, uh, a review on, uh, on Outside Providence. Alec Baldwin's best film, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, talk to you Monday morning, 7 a.m.